food source changes Darar Strictly. So Woolly Mammoth thing got as much. Oh, I can tell you're reading because you said Darar Strictly. <laughs> Darar Strictly. Today's episode is brought to you by Fiora de Vino Chianto Classico Reserva 2017 import from Italy. So <laughs> what I'm saying is that the Woolly Mammoths have a consistent lifestyle based off of tens of thousands or millions of years of evolution. Mm -hmm. And if there's an ice age, it does alter their food source, their habitat, and their life as they know it, so they go extinct. Good fucking afternoon, and welcome to the Dylan and Joe Basement Podcast. We're your hosts, Dylan. And I'm Joe. <laughs> what are we talking about today, Dylan? We're talking about megafauna. What does that mean? I, I, got, I got no clue. I mean, I got uh, this mega man. There's a... Uh... Megaliths, there's a megalodon, that's a giant shark. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm way off base here. What is megafauna, Dylan? You forgot Titanoba? <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, know who that is either. <laughs> uh, what does it mean? We're talking animals over a certain, or, or creatures over a certain uh, size. Uh, like, think of, go on Google, Google biggest animal of all time. We're talking megafauna. That's, That's what we're is. talking about here. So Cheers thanks, flora that. and fauna. The flora is the plant life, and the fauna is the animal life. Megafauna, giant animals. And we're doing it in tribute to the movie that came out recently, the smash bang hit, uh, Godzilla versus Kong, which should have been called Godzilla versus King Kong, because he is, he is King Kong after all. There's also Donkey Kong, uh, Dixie mm -hmm. Kong, Diddy Kong. But he's yep. King Kong. And I was watching the movie recently and it just came out on people's minds. And I said, those are some giant beasts. What other giant beasts have actually walked the face of the earth? And that's how we come to the conclusion today. We're talking about megafauna today, folks. Megafauna today, boys and girls. It's a perfect time to talk about this. And what a cooler subject to talk about than, as as you know, if you've gotten used to the Dylan Joe Basin podcast, we measure in gorillas. We We're do. First, and I know, and I, 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 I looked it up and you're going to be surprised. But we are the first basement podcast to measure in gorillas, right? Is that I mean, so? this is not even this isn't a fucking joke. Wow. So. You know, I figured mm -hmm. you know it could be po we're pretty unique guys. We had a, a unique perspective on things, but we're the only podcast to do measuring gorilla. That's interesting. Okay. And the only basement podcast to do that. Wow. Put a notch in my belt then. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Love that. So. But on the topic at hand, I had to start out this way. Godzilla versus King Kong dropped last week. I yeah, for the record, I did see the movie already. Uh, you haven't seen it yet. But movie aside, concept alone, Godzilla versus King Kong in the movie. Minor spoiler: they're the same size. To make it fair, where mm -hmm. King Kong yep. historically Super is very important. tiny compared to Godzilla. Godzilla is the size of a building. King Kong fam famously climbed the Empire State Building, so you couldn't be the size of a building to climb it, right? Um, but in the movie, they're the same size. So I, I want to pose this question to you, Dylan. Who do you take in that fight, Godzilla versus King Kong? And tell me why. Because I'd be willing to duke it out with you right now before we get started here. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's a fantastic question. Perfect question for today. Um, uh, you brought up a really good point um, in that King Kong and Godzilla have both changed sizes by, uh, you know, 100-ish or more feet. <laughs> Absolutely. Both year. of them have, yeah, just fluctuated so much. I mean, King Kong, the most recent movie, I think, has the biggest growth spurt. But Godzilla also no has question. grown multiple times over the years, mm -hmm. the, the most recent iteration being the biggest Godzilla ever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, 1933, King Kong was, was, uh, was much smaller. Um, yeah, he was basically obviously. like uh, Mighty Joe Young, but more of a large gorilla, probably. Yeah. I, I can't remember the exact numbers. Maybe Very strong, 15, 20 feet gorilla. tall, maybe 30 feet tall, maybe, but not even really. It just, just a giant gorilla, really. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. And even in the movie uh, King Kong from what, 2005, um, six ish? Yeah, the one with um, Jack Black in it. And Jack one, Black and, and the girl. Yeah, um, he was basically just a giant gorilla. He was pretty big, but he was, he was, his hands, a human was still, you know, much bigger than his hand. So, yeah, yeah, he bigger, could but, hold her like, uh, I mean, the, the classic example is like the size of a Barbie doll in your hand would be a human. Yeah. And, you know, the size of a Barbie doll in Godzilla's hand classically would be like a car. <laughs> <laughs> like right. that's a little bit different right exactly so um so that's king kong and then uh yeah godzilla last i checked in 2014 he was 350 feet tall so we're talking a 30, 35 story building I mean, it's right now and that, that's what we're talking about giant monsters here yeah, where we're talking big in the movie shit. uh they do scale kong up to that size they do some weird contrivance example of why he's that big now uh, yeah. I don't give a shit why. It's not, a, not the point. But yeah, so in the movie, they are the same size. But you're taking mm-hmm. them pound for pound, or relatively, at least the mm-hmm. same height. Who do you got in this fight if you're putting money up on the money line? Uh, it's, a, it's a perfect question just because I haven't seen the movie. And um, mm-hmm. I'm kind of uh, thrown and out. And yeah, like throat. I said, the movie is the impetus for this question, but I'm not going to answer it as if it's the movie. We're talking about as if these these fellows really existed. You know what I mean? Let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm not talking about the history exactly. Like we are, we are really. Um, we'll get into this later in the podcast, but we are mm-hmm. we are just picturing the scene behind you with these two animals. Exactly. Uh, yeah, behind me here is uh, Tokyo, the classic stomping grounds, pun intended, of Godzilla. When since when does Tokyo have the Eiffel Tower in it? That's not the Eiffel Tower. It does look like it though, doesn't it? <laughs> Thank you. All right, I want to clarify that. Um, yeah, it's a like, steel tower that's lit like the Eiffel Tower. It's not as tall as the Eiffel Tower though. Very good. Um, so it looked a little, like, so this doesn't look like Paris, but maybe, I don't know. Um, my grandfather was in Tokyo in World War II. That's where he went. Um, actually the year Damn. after I found that out. Hell of a place, place to be in World War II, no matter what size you're on. Actually, he went to Tokyo. Um, Damn. but, um, uh, who I have to win. So let's bring out some, real quick. so let's do it. Uh, we got, <clears throat> ah, the king of the monsters himself. And I know that you asked a very black and white question. Um, but oh, no, have... it has many shades of gray, maybe even 50 or plus. <laughs> 50 shades of gray question. I just don't have straightforward answers um, on this podcast. It's quite hard for me. So our, we've got way. we've got Godzilla here. And this is the 70s or 80s version of Godzilla. Mm-hmm. And the number one thing that I noticed about him is he's really sharp. Everything is sharp on him. Sure, because the teeth, everything, claws. Obviously, somebody... it's the spines on his back, a famous Godzilla trademark. He's got those spines all the way back there, those plates. Mm-hmm. And and if I was going to defend myself against, if I was going to evolve into a monster that um, could dominate another type of monster, who mm-hmm. would have, like, for example, King Kong, or right. Kong, as the movie calls him. Mm-hmm. um is you he's a he's a grabber you know he wants to grab onto things or whatever it is yeah and he's so damn sharp that's kind of hard it's going to be tough for him to get a good grab so you get some good punches in here you know there's all sorts of things but again this is the 80s uh, version mm-hmm. um and again on the list of top 10 most dangerous uh banned children's toys of all time is this one right here because it actually really it's is, just that sharp dude throw this at your brother or sister it's like the it's weapon not good you know? <laughs> yeah like, yeah, no, there's no give to this. There's no rubber. Those those are hard plastic, so there's no give to it. Like, yeah, so you, you can just bash someone in. Easily lose an eye. These are these are even like sharp. It's it's rough hands. Wow. Everything. It's not even fun to hold. There's no nothing I can I can't even hold this thing. It's not a stuffed so, animal. It's a statue, a movable yeah, statue. Yeah, exactly. So so he's in the house. He's in the house. King of the monsters himself, Godzilla. Godzilla, everyone. So um so there's Godzilla, and uh, who do I have to win? It's a really tough battle, especially since they're both the same size. Mm-hmm. We know for a fact that. Well, it's also bringing about- in the fact that King Kong uh, has hands. Uh, and Godzilla has hands as well, but he's got the T-Rex manipulation system. of a great ape. He's got maybe the intelligence of a great ape. And uh, he can swing amongst the city as if he was an ape, which gives him a lot more, uh, you know, maneuverability. Godzilla, famously a lumbering uh, beast. He's got those giant thick thighs, those, yep. <laughs> those big meaty thighs, a giant tail. He is trudging through the city, smashing wherever he goes, but he's not very mm. nimble and quick nope. unless you get him Agility in the water, is his name. which is a big part of Godzilla. If you get him in the water, it lights up for you because he lives in the water full time. Mm. When he's on the land, it's almost like he's fish out of water there, and that's his, not his yeah, ideal territory. So I'd say yeah. in the water, King Kong versus Godzilla, not even a discussion. It's yeah. Godzilla 110 10 times. Mm-hmm. I mean, he can breathe water. He can drag him to the deep. Uh, yeah. He can kill him. 
But we're talking about on land here, and I think that Kong has the agility um, bonus over Godzilla in that. The, in that the agility there. and strength, especially, we know we just based off of just even the size of their muscles, it, King Kong is stronger. And mm-hmm. if I were to play a video game and, and um, try both of them out, um, I almost certainly would be better with King Kong just because of the agility plus the strength, whereas opposed. Uh, Godzilla is is really married to the ocean on top of yes is he breathing fire in this movie because it depends on the movie he's got a fire thing well and no, I no, hear I was gonna wait until he's gotten to the discussion to get to bring it up but yes of course he has a nuclear fire that he can breathe out of his mouth See, which is a really huge important. advantage huge advantage to a hair <laughs> go over uh, Kong here uh, Kong can't breathe piece. fire at all uh, much less radioactive laser breath that it can destroy mm-hmm. an entire city with I mean that really tips the edge and yeah the, yeah for, yeah for Godzilla exactly. there. Yeah, that's rough. Um, that's going to be hard for King Kong, but um, but at least the thing is, Godzilla is pretty predictable. I mean, he's a predictable enemy. The radio. Sure, yeah, Kong's really got the wits, with, but... and then Godzilla, you know, Godzilla is is not you know stupid. He's, he's not like yeah. a, a bull to a red cape or whatever. But it's still he doesn't have the wits of Kong. You know, Kong can form relationships yeah. with human beings as he has done in the past, and we, they can say Godzilla has in some of the movies, but really he's more of a a force of nature, where Kong yeah. is one with nature. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. And I was thinking of um, multiple, two different things to, to, to help with this as well is, uh, is one is um, one of my favorite movies of all time that is not related, but uh, is a um, similar, oh, fuck, what does it mean? It's, it's sort of a horror movie about uh, New York City, and there's this giant monster, and everyone's Cloverfield. Cloverfield, yeah. So, 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 King, so Godzilla is missing the aspect of the Cloverfield monster that's the unknown. We know all about him. And sure. then two... Um, there was another super important reference that we have to bring up, and it's the video game from uh, N64, where you're those monsters running around the city, smashing Rampage. Everything. Fucking Rampage. Shout out yeah, to Yeah, that's Rampage. a great game. The and then, and then famously, time. they have a lizard and a monkey mm-hmm. or an ape in that game, yep. specifically, obviously, because of Godzilla and King Kong's, no doubt. Rampage was incredible. And great it's game. a great way to put yourself in the shoes of both monsters here. And I just think that it's a tough battle because they had to give Godzilla you know, nuclear fire breath. Um, but, uh, mm-hmm. but, um, K- King Kong, um, is, is who I would choose to be if I was going to be one of them just because you have, he's the same, pretty much we're going size and weight as, as Godzilla. Yep. Godzilla kind of looks like a, like a, just a, he's not as healthy looking. I mean, King Kong is fucking ripped. <laughs> yeah. But you know, King so, Kong's so- got a more of an ape physique, like a human being. So he looks more ripped cause he's a, He's an ape. Godzilla's tail is almost the size of uh, the whole entire height distribution that King Kong. I mean, that tail and those legs, yeah. you can you can take down a building and whack you yeah. with it. I think of those Komodo dragon tails they have on their Indonesia. Those can break a human Rough. spine just with the tail alone. So even though they don't have a lot of upper body strength, I mean, Drags it's not built for it. Snaps back. So really, yeah, I think Godzilla's yeah. built more of like the, that lizard mentality where it's all mouth and tail and, and the arms are kind of a secondary thing where Kong, it's all arms, baby. It's all arms. All arms, baby. Exactly. But again, he can swing, so he can, uh, there's just mm-hmm. so many things. So needless to say, it's a freaking pretty goddamn fair battle. It, it, it is a good matchup, as long as you're the same yeah, size. Yeah, we're, we're talking, we're talking a, uh, uh, you know, a fighter jet versus a bomber that's covered in like all sorts of weapons, you know, mm-hmm. like it's, it's not necessarily the same because it's bigger than that, but, it, but, but like. So, yeah, I get your metaphor though. It does track yeah. for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. They both fuck. They both fuck shit up too. <laughs> so, where are we going with this? Are you telling us the secret? Who wins? Who doesn't win? I'm not. I'm not, not going to give that away. Clearly Don't not. Away. I'm not. No spoilers here. I, I just thought it'd be it. interesting to talk about. In my in my fight before I even watched the movie, I'm glad you picked King Kong because I'm gonna pick Godzilla uh, mm-hmm. nine times out of ten. I do love King Kong, especially with the, the newer movies. I like it with the aspect they have of my like Kong Skull Island is probably my favorite one uh, mm-hmm. for showing Kong. The, the Jack Black one's okay. The 70s one is pretty cool. I haven't seen the original black and white one, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, only clips of it. But I do love Kong. But Godzilla, it's just got a special place in my heart. Fucking love him. He's in the ocean. He's a, he's a product so of cool. nuclear proliferation. Sorry, that's hard to say. And uh, and he's got the nuclear fire breath. He's, you know, he's going and stomping all over Tokyo. And, and he defeats all the monsters on Earth and in space. And I just think he's the coolest. And uh, I would pick him to win just because of, uh, yeah, not only the uh, the sea abilities, but his strength and the nuclear fire breath. It's going to be hard to beat there. Um, but like I said, spoiler free. Uh, definitely check the movie out. And, you know, when you write a movie, especially when they put $200 million into it, 
they, they don't they don't consult two people arguing over a podcast so they made it much more interesting than what we'd even say so i think it's they worth should. checking out we'd have some and there might be a couple of surprises insight. in there that you wouldn't expect too interesting yeah i uh yeah they both hold a special place in my heart just from being a kid and watching the movies and yeah me too. yeah they're cool and too. um and just obviously having just action figures everywhere of both of them um and uh yeah i mean i really really got i really got excited about about king kong from the mid-2000s mm -hmm. god that was such a great time and that was just so cool because it was it was about his original story i mean there were biplanes trying to shoot him down and it was mm -hmm. just so fun you know, on top of the empire state building and that's the other thing i mean king kong is is an american uh uh hero and godzilla is a japanese hero you know, that's right heroes, yeah it's a good king point Kong has the empathy i don't think godzilla really gives a shit um about mm -hmm. humans but yeah uh, in some stories godzilla i mean yeah in some stories he does give a shit and the newer ones too it's mm -hmm. he's still a force of destruction but he does he does protect the earth from other monsters it's almost the, as the fact that it's like um the devil you know kind of deal where, where other monsters come from outer space and godzilla might destroy the city but he'll destroy the other monster too and then he goes back to the sea and waits mm -hmm. till his next battle i mean like Godzilla might be destructive, like Superman, you know, saving the city and blowing up a whole building. Yeah. But he, but he, ultimately, he is a friend of the Earth because he is part of the Earth. And yeah. even if you don't love him, it's like a hurricane or like the ocean, like the rains. The same rain that brings the sustenance to grow the crops can flood the whole town and destroy it. And that, to me, is what Godzilla is. He's not inherently good or evil. He's part of the Earth. He is the Earth. So you better be on his side because if you're, if you're against him, not, not good for you. Is it weird to me that I find um, Godzilla? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> Wait, is it weird to you? <laughs> oh, okay. It's, yeah. it's not weird to me. Is my whole point. Uh -huh. But but I generally um, find Godzilla and King Kong more realistic than superhero movies. Like for some reason, <laughs> I'm well, dead serious. It yeah, seems yeah. more. It seems more possible for this to happen than mm -hmm. Superman. Well, I, I have to agree with you, especially as we get into megafauna today, that there's been more examples of things like Godzilla and King Kong on the face of the earth than ever someone taking flight without using any lift or aerodynamics, uh, shooting lasers out of their eyes or, you know, being it's impervious to bullets. Spider. All those things have never happened, but there have been giant beasts on this earth in the very recent past. So as we dive into megafauna today, I'll happen to agree with you there. I think this is much more plausible. Yeah, I, I agree with you completely on that. It's, it's, it's something, I mean, and it ties right into everything else, but it's, I never, I never have, I've never been a big uh, superhero person for some reason, but I've always, Oh, I have guys. been uh, on the other hand. I know I that I yeah. love for me, for me, for some reason, I just never, I could never connect with them as much. Although they all have adversity and really deep stories and the whole type of thing. Some of them more than others, obviously Superman's yeah. kind of I'm not lacking on that scale for sure. Yeah. Spider-Man, you know, he's from Queens. Spider-Man's great. Pretty cool. Um, uh, Daredevil, you know, blind nuclear whatever waste hits him in the eyes or something um acid partner get it you know um i guess daredevil on the hand didn't get his essence. abilities from nuclear waste he just became blind it's the shittiest origin story he didn't gain powers he just was really good at um like acrobatics and then he became blind so he had to get better at it and but it kind of gave him like a sonar. sixth sense for it or whatever. He got sonar. Remember, he can see rain when it rains. He can see his. He can uh, see that, that's Jennifer more in the Ben Affleck movie than in the actual comics. But oh, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, in yeah, some versions, really yeah, in some versions, they have him being able to see partially or, or like kind of they use that as more of like a, a aesthetic to show you how he can hear. But people who can use sonar are now who are blind, um, they don't have to get any superpowers to do it. It's just really difficult. Yeah. I follow this guy on TikTok who um, he's like, he's like, I'm blind. This is how I skateboard. And he goes and fucking rips. It's yeah, I saw a kid doing a fucking flip on a skateboard with, with one of those poles in front of him so he could see where it's he's going, be grinding guy. rails and shit. I was like, same this guy's guy. amazing, yeah. dude. He's like our age. I'd give him 30. And he's fucking awesome. Just like, he's so cool. And he does all sh sorts of cool shit. And he's like super positive spirited. I'm like, I want to hang out with this fucking dude. Yeah, cool dude. Who wouldn't want to? That's fucking fantastic. Yeah. All right, so rolling into our our beast here, you'll have to watch the movie for Godzilla versus King Kong and watch what happens. I ain't about to spoil it now, but I just think it's such a cool matchup. And of that spirit, I thought we'd kick off our megafauna um, with the best examples of what real world animals would most represent Godzilla and King Kong. What animals really walked the earth that were as close as we have seen um, through fossil records or 
carbon dating, archaeology, paleontology, things like that, to what, what are the closest we can have on this planet to a real Godzilla and King Kong? So I came up with uh, the King Kong one first, which is a lot closer to our timeline that this beast existed. And the nerdiest of the um, anthropology people on the podcast will realize that when you use the word pithecus, it has that subtext has to do with uh, hominids and apes that are more human like, like Australopithecus, which you think is one of the earliest ancestors to humans. Basically, looks like an ape but stands up like a human, can use tools. This one's called Gigantopithecus. Can you guess why they might call it Gigantopithecus? Um, yes, because it has a gigantic pithecus. That's exactly right. It's pithecus is off the charts. <laughs> it is the it's biggest pithecus. ape. The biggest ape to have ever walked the planet as far as we know. As far as we know, I'm just going to say it's a, it's a blanket statement for the rest of the podcast. This is As far as we know right now, this is the biggest ape to ever have existed. This, this MFR was 12 feet tall and 650 plus pounds so when you're talking about those gorillas this is a couple of gorillas worth of one ape 12 foot tall ape gorillas we said is are usually around five foot to five foot six this thing is double that in height and add on a couple extra pounds to boot when, when you start doubling up on it this thing was gigantic it was a member of the asiatic apes um so it's more of the apes that come from asia rather than the ones that come from Africa, like chimpanzee uh, and humans. Um, so basically, it, we think it looks like a gigantic orangutan. It's a cousin of the orangutan. So picture a 12-foot-tall, orange, hairy beast that's probably around 650 pounds. God damn. God fucking damn it. I mean, I got a picture of him right here. There you go. And it's, well, we'll obviously pull it up for the podcast. People well, can see the podcast. I, I say that it's a picture. of It's, it's got to be like a museum or something, but it's got his teeth. and Yeah, yeah. They stuff. recreated it's what they think it looks like. Yeah, nuts, man. I mean, this is it, it's also exactly what you uh, picture Bigfoot to look like, too. Right. Yeah. And a lot of people who um, are Bigfoot hunters or people who, you know, subscribe to that idea, the Yeti, think that there's a possibility that if this beast does still exist, that it's a gi gigantopithecus that actually is Bigfoot. Yeah, my thing, my thing with Bigfoot is we're not going to go there right now, but like we it's, will. It's, though, it's super on topic with what we're talking. Oh yeah, um, to sure. get mass that big out of a carbon life form, it needs to eat and shit so much. Like we. That's the something. thing. There's that is the something. thing we're going to find a lot You're of times to on this list. Here, you know, amateur fucking alien guy, but. Um, uh, cryptozoology, you know, you name it, but, but I just, you have to eat and shit so much. Yep. Like you'd be amazed at what a five foot five person can fucking do. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. A, um, you know, uh, 12 foot, almost 13 foot tall gorilla. Um, yeah. 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 Um, eat, uh, the, the cons yeah. to, to survive that to eat so much fucking food. And we know that, exactly. you know, like. And then they have to shit somewhere. So it'd be, it's, it's, and as, as everybody, since, you know, we've gotten worse at it, but, you know, hunters are trackers. It's really what they do best. Mm -hmm. You'd see something more than, than the occasional footprint uh, once right. every couple of years. You know, like there's got to be more to it than that. Yeah. And I think even beyond just the ability to find a Bigfoot if he's out there, it's just the general statement we're going to find in this list of uh, megafauna that, the, the, the planet has to have the ability to sustain things that are this large. We're looking back to the past at things like dinosaurs. They didn't just die out because, you know, of the meteor strike. They couldn't survive on the planet as we have it today. The oxygen levels are different. The environments, the climates are different. Other animals are different. They wouldn't be able to survive. That's why you find the largest land animal today is the elephant. And they've made it through the eye of the needle here. Uh, which it would be very hard for an elephant to do. But <laughs> they, they have survived um, through a long period of time at, in being cousins of the Macedon, the woolly mammoth, and other giant beasts like that. But they, it's, it's not an easy niche to fill to be the giantest or biggest, most humongous animal on the planet. There's a reason why you don't find a lot of animals that big. It's almost impossible to be that big. You have to eat a goddamn farm's worth. It takes forever to grow. It takes forever to survive. And a lot of things can go wrong. And that's why 
Um, in the past, there was a lot more animals that were much, much more massive, like the Gigantopithecus than we have now. Let's find out why, perhaps, as we go through here. But that's my uh, posit to the closest thing we had to King Kong, a 12-foot-tall ape that would put us to shame. Makes a gorilla look like a little kid. Yeah, yeah. And besides that, we do have some pretty large gorillas. One of them just passed away, um, you know, within the past 20 years, uh, who, was, who was quite big, but he was still, you know, under 1,000 pounds by far. Mm-hmm. So. And I'd say uh, maybe six feet tall, probably under six feet tall as well. Nowhere yeah, near 12 six, feet, six. which is about double the size there. Mm-hmm. Yep. So uh, so then I walked into what is the closest thing we had to Godzilla? I mean, That's obviously, you're, you're going to think question. right away of we got dinosaurs, things like that. People might jump to Tyrannosaurus Rex, the biggest carnivore we can think of with that big old skull. But picture Godzilla. I mean, Tyrannosaurus Rex is no arms. He's all tail and all skull, but Godzilla is a lot more um, legs. His his skull is a lot uh, smaller uh, based on the size of his body. It's a lot shorter as well. And uh, he's got be- decently sized arms there and not just those uh, the little fingers there. He's got four of them or five of them in a lot of cases to, to grab on to things. So what we found is the closest one to that seems to be the... Uh, ceratosaurus which is from an earlier period so this is the jurassic period which funny enough jurassic park if it was set during the jurassic you probably have this as the bad guy who lived millions of years before t-rex ever came along but he actually had a shorter snout on him closer to what godzilla looks like with a short snout rather than the long t-rex face uh he's got four fingers on him longer more developed arms a uh, big old tail as well and uh you bipedal just like godzilla is and it could grow up to 20 feet long and about 1,300 pounds. So nowhere near the T-Rex size, but still certainly uh, you can see as an ancestor to Godzilla. Maybe add a little bit of radioactive uh, material in there and start growing like the giant radioactive lizard that Godzilla is, the nuclear powerhouse that he is. Um, it's, yeah, it's been found in Utah and Portugal. So uh, if you span different parts of the globe, pretty similar habitats back in that time. But the only thing that hangs me up on that is that there's no evidence of this dinosaur ever swimming. And a major part of Godzilla is that he lives in the ocean and and he he is one of the ocean. He swims uh, with the best of them. So I found what I think is actually a closer allegory to Godzilla. And you might have heard of this animal before watching uh, things like Mm -hmm. Planet Earth or BBC, things like that. And that's the marine iguana. I think the marine iguana is the closest thing we have to Godzilla. He's got the spines was- on his back. He can dive in the water, uses that big long tail and swims around almost like a fish. Can hold his breath for an exceedingly long period of time. The only reason they actually rise up to the surface is because they're cold blooded and their body temperature sinks to the point that their muscles might seize up. So they actually rise to the surface before they run out of oxygen, just because they need to warm up. They could stay down there for even longer. So for my money, uh, Godzilla is much more like the marine iguana that we have today. And uh, even though he's not the king of the monsters, it's a pretty small animal living off the Galapagos Islands exclusively. It is the only lizard that lives and hunts in the sea. And uh, that's my bet for the closest to Godzilla we have. Yeah. And the cool thing is it, it's a herbivore. I mean, like, and it's, yes, it's cool, you're right. It doesn't cool eat little, meat. Cool little guy. I mean, like, it's awesome. I mean, you see like the, um, uh, the, a Komodo dragon and stuff yeah. like that. And they're terrifying, but they definitely are, you know, at least insects um, and possibly more. I don't really know, but, but it's just, you the see, Komodo dragon? wash up on the beach on the ocean. You go, Holy shit, we're fucked. And then it's just eating leaves. You're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah. No, they're not going to eat you. Oh <laughs> well, yeah. That's all they can eat. Especially if you see the whole beach full of them. You're figuring out, they might turn on each other here, but they don't actually eat meat. So they have to go under the water and look for the, yeah. uh, the sea, uh, sea flora as it were. But yeah, Komodo dragons certainly eat meat. Uh, they've been known to kill deer and things like that. Uh, they oh, they, will, they eat shit. meat. They will crazy. gobble that thing down. They actually have um, one of the only bites in the animal kingdom. That it's not venomous, but it will kill you in, in over the course of a couple hours. Not because bacteria. of the venom or toxins. It's because of bacteria it cultivates in its mouth. And when it bites you, you become infected and you slowly, uh, the necrosis slowly sets in and starts to eat away at your skin and your body until you basically give out and then they proceed to eat you at their own whim wow that's amazing so komodo dragons um, are, weird, weird are amazing on creatures. top of that about humans too i learned from a doctor who told me this if i'm ever in a self-defense situation and you were like need to really hurt someone bite them because if you bite yourself it's fine but if you bite another human 
we mm -hmm. have something in our mouth that causes almost an identical type of concept in other people, not right. yourself. So your our saliva does something pretty nasty to other people too. Sure, give them rabies. Other people though, not you. Like if you bite your arm, it's okay. But if you if I bite you, you're in for it. Yeah. Also, there is a built-in uh, mechanism for survival where you can't bite down on yourself to your, the full potential you have with your mouth. Your body will stop you from doing that. But the, you know, you've heard this chest on a million times. The human finger is about the same consistency as a raw carrot. So you could, if you could chomp hard enough, you could chomp through someone's finger. Um, if you really chomp down, the, the, the human jaw itself has the capacity to break concrete. But and unfortunately, your your teeth and your nerve endings won't allow you to do that because you shatter your teeth to pieces. But the muscles alone could do it. So if you are willing to bite down on someone's skin as hard as you wanted, you could do a lot more damage to them than you could do to yourself if you're just doing a little test bite. Bite your hand as hard as you can. Best you won't bite as hard as you can. Your body doesn't let you do it. It's the same thing as trying to rip your own arm off. At some point, your body just gives up on you. And, and it's, a, it's a built in, you know, not only is it a human thing, it's an animal thing. It's very hard for animals to harm themselves uh, willingly because you're just just generations and generations and millions of years of biology saying don't kill yourself have sex keep eating keep breathing and never die so it's yeah. really against um the concept of being alive i mean humans are one of the only animals who really uh outside of starving yourself to death um commit suicide animals just don't have that in them they don't have the concept of you know, oblivion or trying to end it. They just keep on surviving. It's just part of being alive. Oh, doing it. Yep. Humans are the ones who figured Crazy. it out. Oh yeah. We don't have to do this anymore. Yep. That's something. So, so, so that, that's my two on uh, Godzilla and uh, Kong. So let us right run right into uh, megafauna. Now you want to, any right megafauna you want to talk about? We can maybe go back and forth one for one, like the Bermuda triangle. I Chat do. up in between. Uh, absolutely. Cool. Um, so, this isn't megafauna by the definition, but I do have to bring up a, I don't know if you know this, but this would be fun. We're going to give a pause to our listeners. What is the biggest organism on earth? Take a guess. Um, Joe, do you know? Biggest organism. I think that it's a, it's a, it's one conglomeration of mushrooms. That's yeah. like the, it's like the size of half of a forest or something insane like that. It's one yeah. organism. It's several wild. miles. Yeah. So like miles it, it, really. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's in the United West. It's in, it's in the West, like in like, like kind of like Joshua tree and stuff. Really? Like that. I didn't even know it was in the United States. It's in that sort of area. And it, uh, it grows in bulks and bulk and spreads underground. So you see like, a bunch of mushroom caps or whatever it is, but it's just, it's, it's all one part thing of one organ several miles in diameter, and um and yeah, or actually sorry, I was it might be down there, but uh, in Oregon is where it's really the most found. Um, wow, and it's uh it communicates to each other. It's parasitic in nature. Um, it uh, it's uh, absolutely incredible. You know that like it. I forget the exact uh, coolest thing about it, but basically it it. Um, it distributes, let's just say wealth for, for just keep it simple, but nutrients and that type of stuff, like it's wealth, um, to dying parts of it. So it's, it's yeah. all always doing well, or it's all doing bad. So if one area is lacking in, uh, or has too much sunlight or something, it kind of like, it, it, it plays with itself around, around what, um, the environment is doing at that time. And it's, yeah. that makes sense. If it, it is one, you know, mm -hmm. complete organism rather than, I mean, you wouldn't, you know, if your if your feet were cold, you wouldn't cut them off and keep the rest of your body warm. It's all part mm -hmm. of you. Yeah. Unlike a forest where some things might die out, this is one organism. It's going to completely um, circle out nutrients or whatever through that. That it is fascinating how large mm -hmm. that thing is. It really is um, way to go swinging for the fences for our first megafauna. Literally the biggest yeah, creature the on biggest. the planet. Yeah, no matter what, it is the biggest living thing. Yeah, on the I planet. would put that under flora just because I, I think that fungi in my mind are more like plants, but they're really not the same uh, family as plants. They are completely not, separate yeah. than plants. They're, they're more of the an same. organism as opposed to because um, they they like there's like a, I can't remember. There's a lot to it than that. Um, yeah, them growing out of the ground is not conducive to them being a plant. Their cellular structure is different. The way they survive is different, and um, like you said, that example of an organism that's a mile more miles long, uh, plants can't do that. Even the, the biggest mm -hmm. redwood trees are not um, miles. Yeah. Long. yeah, they might communicate, but they're not the same thing, the same person. Right. Um, and and as as anything most good is completely deadly to humans. Don't eat Don't it. Don't eat it. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. What's up for number two? So my, my first one on the megafauna list is what I picture when I picture megafauna. And it actually is an animal that existed, like I said, for the other ones. A lot of these exist pretty close to nowadays. And there's a very more than solid chance that humans interacted with it. And they lived amongst them. Um, and that is the megatherium, also known as the ground sloth, also known as the giant sloth. This thing existed in South America uh, 100,000 years ago, we think, is maybe when it started, you know, popping up, maybe sooner than that. Um, but this thing is, a, is the name's right there. It's a giant sloth. It was as tall as 20 feet tall. So now we're talking about elephant size for a sloth. This is insane. This is absolutely the craziest one of all time. And it was weighing up to four tons, a.k.a. 8,000 pounds. And it's a freaking sloth. And it would roam around. And it was an herbivore, much like another giant beast, like the elephant, right? It didn't eat meat, much like sloths now don't eat meat. But it's it's uh it's kin that we have today the modern sloth like a three-toed sloth is you know his wingspan maybe about three feet this thing was 12 feet tall arms not even standing and it did stand on two legs it was capable of doing it it mostly walked around on four legs like sloths do now um but this thing went extinct uh we think around twelve thousand years ago and so that's well within the time range of yeah hominid yeah. going and living in south america so we, we do think that humans interacted with it and we have um I believe some examples of artwork and things like that that could have been depicted as this great sloth, this giant sloth that's an elephant-sized sloth. It's amazing. Not that long ago. What the fuck is that about? I mean, that's the craziest thing ever. And, like, you know, we see – I've never – besides the Barnum Bailey Circus on the road, um, I've never seen an elephant before in real life. I mean, a zoo. Maybe, maybe. I don't remember. I've been to a zoo in a while. Um, I went to the uh, zoo in Franklin Park uh, for drinks one time uh, when I worked in that area. But nice. I can grab a couple of pops down by the... Uh, you guys want to hit the bar? Yeah, let's go to the zoo. They have a nice uh, jungle juice there. It was a fundraiser, like, outside of the area. It was really fucking cool. I'm lucky to be able to do that, but... Um, I love the but, zoo, uh, even though it's kind of fucked up. It's, it's, yeah, like, it was, it's the only way yeah, you can see the, those animals. Well, Wildlife Refuge is now the new zoo. and uh, yeah. fine. But, As long um, as it's not the circus, they're being treated a lot better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or Joe, Joe, Joe Exotic. Um, yeah, so, exactly, if it's not one of those places. But, I mean, for the most part, just quick disclaimer, a lot of zoos, they are, the animals that live there, they didn't they didn't trank them on the African savanna and drag them to Providence, Rhode Island. They, they have been <laughs> in captivity their whole lives. This is how they have to live, and... Hopefully yeah, the or, zoos or are were, raising enough money for wildlife research and things like that. We're hoping. Yeah. yeah. Or they were saved from a place where they were in danger. Right. Or exactly. Right. Or yeah. So. Starvation or something. So, um, uh, I was just saying, I mean, the, so like I, I have intentionally kind of stayed away from the giant sloth just because I'm just like this. People I would sloth, too. Things fucking like, terrifying. Cult, not the same thing. There's a cult following those sloths. You know, some people are like, I'm a sloth person and they're all oh, about, yeah, no, I like sloths too, but like some people like that's they kind of just get it at because they're weird and stuff. And I'm like, I get it. And I've seen a real, I've seen real sloths before recently, um, and they're so fucking weird. Yeah. Um, but um, it's just, I, I, it, un, unimaginable that you could a sloth was the size of an elephant. Were they Insane. hanging from trees and shit too? Oh, uh, they would not climb trees. Forty five. They could not. Pounds? Okay. The, yeah. yeah, I mean, we're, you're thinking of the three toes sloth, the modern sloth. They're so small. They're all arms. They live in trees the whole yeah, time. Can... This thing, for sure, I mean, picture, yeah, like picture an elephant, picture like an elephant meets a bear, just this massive land animal. There's no way it's climbing any trees. It's eating from trees, for sure. 20 feet tall, it can eat from the top of any tree, you know, like, almost like a freaking giraffe, not quite with a neck, but still. And yeah, I'm sure it was ripping trees out of the fucking ground, this thing. It was eating all the trees in the whole land, but it wasn't climbing them at all. It was, it was living on the ground, for sure. That's amazing. I wasn't going to say this yet, but it's I, I, I just can't help myself. Um, cloning is possible. This might show up in our lifetime because they're working on one of Are they cloning topics. a sloth? No, nah, something else. We'll get oh, some other animal that has uh, ancestors that we might be able to maybe gestate it in. No, I think no, no. Something better. frozen that we uh, got blood from. We'll yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to be going with that. <laughs> but don't want to spoil it, but, but, but. Not to be Jurassic Park man, but something hopefully in our lifetime would be really cool. I would love to see a giant sloth. And that's a whole ethical debate. I know. Look, we know. We get it. But do you choose giant sloth or do you not choose giant sloth? 
I would very much like to see one in person. Give it a because there were humans who did a good fucking life in in a no, like like the uh, the Truman Show like that big of a world for itself. Like you can't yeah. say that it's and you like just it, it, it's all good. You know, like some humans can just sit behind sit on the couch all day and watch TV for the for a hundred years. It's it's fine. Like. Mm-hmm. Just do good, do good things. But I, I can't say that within the right circumstances and treatment, I wouldn't press the giant sloth button and have one show up in a year. I, can't I, I mean, for me, I, I know you're talking about like treating them well or not. For me, it's a no brainer. hundred percent. If we can recreate these animals, clone them, uh, things like that, I would say do it right now. Do it fucking do it. I don't care about Jurassic yeah. Park, the movie. Mm-hmm. Don't let the little kids in the theme park. Don't let the electric fence fall out. If we can recreate a giant sloth by science, fucking do it. Yeah. I do it right now because if you have the argument like oh don't play god well who played god when they went extinct we'll get into that later uh, <laughs> that's a great so, point yeah. so no no couldn't agree really more on that 100 percent, and exactly exactly all that i can't all right so let's get into god. your next uh megafauna if, we, if you don't mind here what do you got next on the list i got some good shit i don't know which one i say first hell yeah stuff. um all right i'm gonna do it i didn't know if i was ready yet but <clears throat> Shout out to Don Brown, one of my buddies. Um, he made the shirt. Oh, I love it. Yep. This is good stuff. So this brings us into the extinct genus of very large snakes that snakes. live in the Amazon. And uh, specifically, we're talking about two of them. The first one to be discovered was the uh gigantophis and this is it was dated back to before the paleocene uh era or whatever it is um and it was for a long time the largest snake ever recorded Hmm. Um, and this is 40 million years ago okay yeah um so around the same environment as the giant sloth but about uh 40 million or so years earlier when it was roaming the jungles there. Yep, exactly. So um, quite big. We're talking 35 feet uh, in length. 35 foot snake. Fuck that. How heavy was that son of a bitch? I bet it wasn't skinny. Uh, So they're not, the gigantophis is not that heavy. It's over a thousand pounds, but it's not, it's not like my next one. That's pretty big for a snake though. Jeez. 35 feet, a thousand pounds and it's a snake. No thanks, man. Um, so like layer, it's crazy. I mean, like it's like six humans lengthwise. It's it's, but it's not girth wise mm-hmm. as big as the next fucking guy. So, um, so they found in I think two thousand somewhere between two thousand nine two thousand thirteen. Um, again, Gigantophis is ridiculous. So like I've been around a lot of snakes, big snakes at different. There's like a snake sanctuary I used to go to all the time really really cool and bow constrictors are really fucking huge they can be up to five meters which is uh you know 10 feet long or whatever it is right yeah those it's are our biggest snakes now feet. things like the uh yeah. the python and uh, the boa constrictor things like that yeah and they're really big and i do not want to be in the business of those guys because they're fucking huge um no. but it's just absolute it's just insane dude like I, I and i'm not i'm not a snake person like i i really don't you're dressed I had like some bad snake memories when I was a kid, and I want to bring those up right now. So, like, we had um, we had this neighbor, and um, he uh, he was always getting in trouble, always getting in trouble. Mm-hmm. But he had snakes. So I was like a four or five year old boy, and this neighbor had snakes all the time. And one day, my brother flipped his shit because there was a boa constrictor in my driveway. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's not all. normal for a Hudson. Not Marbury. kidding. Hudson, Massachusetts. 1994 bow constrictor my driveway um so my brother is had he's the one who saw it he's mortified a snake so like since then i'm like holy shit what the fuck um and then we all watched movies and read books when we were kids at those little flip anaconda and it, yeah exactly like bow constrictors are like not good news they're in lion king i mean they're fucking everywhere you just don't snakes just don't yeah snakes. jungle book uh jungle book Ro- sorry Robin Hood. jungle book yeah 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 that's when the, the snake comes yeah i think of ka who can hypnotize yeah. you mm-hmm yeah, exactly. But um, but I, I I overall I like snakes. I um got a, got a harassed severely last time I was at Central Park in New York City by the snake people because I was really interested in the snakes and I was a little drunk. 
Um, and they're trying to put the snakes all over me and I was all about it. Um, but I was like, Hey, they, 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 they want money. It's just not good. But anyway, so, um, so, uh, so the, just the craziest thing though, is just that like the length, like the size in girth and length of, uh, Gigantophis compared to Titanoba, the newest of them. Is it all. really called Titanoba? I thought it was called Titan Boa. Titanoba. Oh, I have I have it as uh, Titanoboa. 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 That Sorry. makes more sense. We got at least the word boa in there at some point. Titanoboa. Yeah, Titanoboa. Cool. Sorry, um, dude. It is the. It's more than the width of me. That's insane. It's a mythical like, the beast. Whole thing basically, is more than the width of me. Um, and it's, it's like the Hydra, one of the Hydra heads that Hercules had to fight, but it's a real animal, a giant <sighs> serpent. How big was that bad boy? Insane, dude, it's insane. So, so the craziest thing is that, like, before I even get into how long this thing is, um, and how much it weighed, is that so? I mean, actually, it's based on the pictures I've seen of like in the like the museum that its skeleton is in. Um, it's it really looks like girth wise. It's like it's really like my arm span like this mm -hmm. around. Yeah, I mean, I could. I could probably kneel down in it like head to toe. So let's say that it's like Damn. four feet in diameter. I mean, it's fucking insane. It's, I mean, and even a boa constrictor absolutely. now can can swallow a human. I mean, it, right. it would die doing it. But imagine how small that that a boa constrictor is now. It can still swallow a human. Imagine how big that titan boa can inflate when it when it's engorged. I mean, it can really stretch out. It could probably eat fucking twenty feet full in that. Well, case. the craziest thing is, I'll share this picture with you. Is that like, it's hard to describe this snake because again we only have fossils and it was right yeah uh, and it's it's been extinct for a couple million years yeah. um and it's dinosaur period snakes so imagine everything's bigger back then this Absolutely. is the snake right. at the time mm -hmm. and again its diameter is 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 bigger than me i mean it's it's like it's very large but the thing you're not thinking about is you're like all right well that's not that crazy it's just a long tube wrong when it opens its mouth it's like six feet so the mouth this six feet up and you're oh like oh my god so it can know, swallow you the tall way. No problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like so, That's if you horrifying. see it in the woods and you go, "Holy shit!" There's a fucking sewer pipe moving through the woods. If yeah, more. sewer pipe. Uh, it wouldn't even like have to strangle you like a boa. It could just eat you pipe. whole. There's no need to squeeze the life out of you. You can just just gulp you right up. <laughs> Nothing. So you at can all. imagine the prey that that thing was having to squeeze apart if it if it hunted the same way as boa constrictors do, where it had to squeeze you to death. It. it must have been just some megafauna. It was killing itself. It's the, one of the coolest things about what it eats too. So, um, but just, just please, God damn, put yourself in the shoes of like 30 million years ago and you're like, walk, you know, you're not there, but you're like walking through the woods and like that's, uh, that's going on. And it's just like, there's a serious threat. Cause this is what ants think of us. You know, it's like terrifying ridiculous. and it's a snake and it's, um, so I didn't say how long it was yet. It's, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the skeleton that they found was like 42 feet long. 42 feet long. um and it was 2500 pounds so again <laughs> snakes don't snakes don't have a whole lot of stuff going on so like but uh 42 feet long that's a lot bigger than a are you kidding me that's a massive absolutely yeah. massive there's this picture that we'll share because i'm just right here it weighs of, as much of, as a cow and it's a of snake this woman whoops um <laughs> of this woman doing this inside of its mouth like it's a house i mean literally it's a tiny home is the is the mouth of this thing Completely it's insane crazy. so crazy thing so um okay so i was wrong so yeah they think 58 to 60 million years ago um and sure it's, yeah it's, Amazonian so it's, it's slightly state. after the dinosaurs um or most dinosaurs we know went extinct 65. so it must have been reigning supreme at that that chance you know, most of the big dinosaurs we know about are extinct now. And we have the biggest snake on campus, the Titanoboa. Get the fuck out of the way. Titanoboa. Apex predator, I imagine. Absolutely insane. Craziest thing. Scary but the, as fuck. The craziest thing about it is based off of what they know about it, which I don't quite understand how they figure these things out. Um, but it also doesn't have fangs and stuff. Um, uh, yeah, a lot it. of boas don't have constrictors themselves. Their their method of killing is strangulation and cutting off the blood supply, and then it swallows you whole. So it doesn't actually use venom to kill, unlike um, things like vipers do. Yeah, vipers. boas don't eat fangs. Cool they just name. fucking open that big gaping maw, and then after you're already dead, they just swallow you fuck whole, and you slowly dissolve like a sarlacc pit over however long it takes to take your entire body to pieces. 
That's it for you. That's it for you. Um, yeah, like a Venus flytrap fucked up. Um, so uh, the craziest thing with a Titana boa is its diet was fish. Fish? This is a fish. fucking left turn for... I had no idea about that. I wouldn't even well, guess that. Well, here's the thing. is With the Titana boa is... I don't know. I mean... Everything was big back then, hence its size. But getting mm-hmm. a sustainable diet on uh, on capybaras or something maybe was a little bit harder because it wasn't as fast because it's fucking so goddamn big. Right. And um, also capybaras didn't exist. And most mammals at the time were just minuscule, so yeah. tiny. You probably would have to eat 100 of them to even sustain your diet. A fish seems a lot more likely to be a, the prey of the boa, especially mm-hmm. living in the Amazon rainforest, much like anacondas today. Well, yeah, a lot right, of their right. diet is fish because they live yep. in the water. And uh, this might be... Um, you know, a deep ancestor to the, the anaconda. The yeah, and thing. to get a fish, dude, all it's going to do is open its mouth in <laughs> exactly. a shallow body of water, and the fish thinks it's a Swims kid. right in, and then classic, next thing you know, you got lunch. Uh, classic Alaskan bullworm situation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's like, literally, that's the best Alaskan way to describe it. There's no scenario. other way to describe it than that. Exactly. You walk in, you see its uh, uvula, you think it's a fucking bur- well, worm. Oh, a little oh, worm in here, and you got no Titana boa. You're already lunch. You. It's Titana boa and taking you in. There's um, one way in, and there's zero ways out. Zero ways out, and that's the life of this thing. It's just damn. It's it's like again, like I'm not for some reason. I'm just the most fascinated with this because if you saw that, it's just I, I can't even express how much I want to see this. Like, yeah, it's the coolest. I would thing. I would love to see me. it as well. Um, I, it's like I said, not in the wild. I don't think I'd like to see it because I'd be mm. way too nervous about it. Um, if I would had to go. Well, you know, 10 miles into the Amazon rainforest to find it. I don't think I'd be very comfortable with that. But to see it, you know, somewhere safe or whatever and have it just be, you know, your mind there, I'd be like, this is crazy. It'd be yeah. I'd love to see it. Yeah, exactly. And like, it's just, I do got to say, it's too bad that everybody is so scared of AI. Um, because Alan Iverson. <laughs> You're dating yourself with that one. Um, uh, is, uh, is because. Um, I, I kind of wish that people were more scared of cloning because they're just not. Um, mm. But like, like everyone, you know, like like in uh, Jurassic Park, like they just go wild with cloning, and then all of a sudden there's like these things are escaped, and there's no way to get out of it. That's way more fun than a robot. It is, but also I think that the, the trouble with um, cloning and genetic manipulation, we're gonna find in the future, has nothing to do with us making T Rexes that are getting loose. Like we said in the past, humans can kill every fucking animal, no problem. It's not, it's not, I'm not bragging. It's just like if the T-Rexes, if 20 T-Rexes got let loose in New York City today, it would be awful, but we'd kill them all in one day. That would be that. <laughs> It'd be it. But, but you know, worse off is when you start fucking with people's genetics. Now people are having babies. You get to pick their eye color and shit yeah. like that. Like Gattaca situation. The problem with that is going to be shit closer to that. Like AI yeah. and genetic manipulation is going to fuck us over in ways that aren't like the movies. They're going to fuck us over in ways that we have in our own lives. You know, when, when AI takes over, it won't be Terminator with guns shooting you with a gun. They'll be manipulating your entire life. You won't have another choice. It'll be it. Same with genetics. They won't make too many T-Rexes and fuck us over. It'll be that, you know, now humans cease to be what we think of as human. Sorry, that's my soapbox for a quick sentence. No, no, it's good. And and I I, I think they're both I, concerns, the they're just not is, the I'm movies. I'm just fantasizing because I'm bummed out that it's not it's not, you know, human extinction by Titan Elba, because it'd be way better. <laughs> that would be great. Be a great <laughs> be way to way go better. Out. Be way better than just like we have all these drones that just kill people. Give me yeah. a break. What a I think it would go. be a suitable way so to for, Yeah, for the earth to take us back, uh, much like Godzilla, that it could uh yeah. Have the old the beasts of old rise up against us and eat us all. I think it would be a fitting end for humanity. Yeah, I, I agree ten thousand. We've been living on borrowed time and ruining the planet for far long enough. It's time for yeah, the exactly. Right then back. Titanoba shows up out of the crust of the earth and goes, "Holy shit!" And just go, ah, swallow your starts all. sucking in every all the all the people in the Amazon and moves up to Massachusetts and all the babies come out and just needs someone for a <laughs> whole next generation of Titanoboas. Oh, uh, God, it's a dream, man. The dream. That's the dream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> After a long day at work, just hanging out on vacation, or some time relaxing with the family. Crack open New England's best IPA.
Bee Hoppy from Wormtown. With a cool and refreshing taste, smooth flavor, that bitter hops hit in the back of your throat, but a smooth finish. Don't worry. Be happy. Um, so yeah, next one up on my megafauna list, I have, um, so what do you think of when you think of throughout history, the biggest cats? Cause one comes in my mind, probably the most famous cat of the ice age pops right into my mind right away. I think it, what's this beast that used to exist. Um, the one from the movie ice age, who's a saber tooth tiger. That's exactly right. The saber tooth tiger. <laughs> That's what I think of, right? With those big fangs coming out of his mouth. Ooh. Also known as the Smilodon is its actual uh, scientific name, which is funny because it sounds like I have a big smile with those big saber tooth teeth. So here I am thinking that must be the biggest cat. I mean, they're, they're, they're taking down woolly rhinos and all kinds of crazy ass shit. I'm thinking in my head. Looking it up, though, the biggest cat to ever exist was not the Smilodon. The Smilodon was only... Um, some of them were slightly larger than the African lion now, and a lot of them were actually smaller than the African lion, which is our um, second biggest cat today behind the tiger, which is the biggest one. Um, but we have the biggest cat to ever have existed, the American lion, as it's known, also known as the American cave lion. And now I'm shaking my head. What the heck? Again, that. forgetting that North America had a rich history of species that we no longer have. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're one of the most boring continents for wildlife. Uh, maybe it's because we grew up here, but Damn. in my mind. But it is the biggest cat to have ever existed on the planet. Um, it was eight feet tall as a cat. So picture it standing up on its hind legs. It would be... Uh, you know, a lion, now you, it puts its paws on a human's shoulders if it stands up. This thing wouldn't even, it would be putting its paws on your shoulders and looking down at you how big it is. It's four feet tall at the shoulder. So if it's standing on all fours, its shoulder would come up to just your chest area here. That's before its head goes up and the rest of its body. And it would grow up to 1,100 pounds, which is massive for a cat. For comparison, the biggest African lion's day you know, roar, MGM signal, uh, king of the jungle. Most of them don't reach 500 pounds. So this is more than double the weight of the largest African lion. This thing was Roman. Absolutely insane. I mean, like, I really can't picture a bigger Just thing than an African lion. I mean, I mean, its body type, you know, for the weight's concerned, it's closer to what we think of as like a grizzly bear. And grizzly bears don't usually get up to um, that that weight either. And this is a feline predator so it, it moves like a lion it is a lion but it's just this giant beast uh, which would fuck a smilodon saber tooth tiger up no problem no problem in a, in a fight and people think that they likely uh lived in caves to shelter against because they lived during the ice age as well uh, a time of many i mean the ice age really is the golden age of mammals if you don't consider uh nowadays you could consider could consider the golden age of mammals but it's just the, all these just massive mammals that just were after the time of the reptiles was over and the birds are trying to make their way to, to becoming uh, a part of society as the world as a whole mm -hmm. mammals really run the show and ice age is the time of mammals whether it is hominids or mammoths or smilodons and this one surely rose to the occasion um much like the Siberian tiger that has to survive in these harsh wintry conditions, it has to find uh, ways to shelter itself in caves. They think that the American lion probably had a very similar uh, habitat and uh, lifestyle as this, whether or not it is much more massive in a fight. Also, the Siberian tiger, which is the biggest cat on the planet, would get its ass kicked by the American lion just because of the weight difference. It's not even close. But they went, they went extinct. I'm sensing a theme here somewhere around 11,000 years ago. Uh, the American lion went extinct for good. Yep, so that's the theme. American we'll that theme lion. Soon, but that theme comes up a lot in these podcasts. Mm -hmm. That 11, 10,000 years ago thing. Mega fun, as it were. What's your next for the list, Dylan? Please, we're gay list. I got to bring it fucking to town because there's just no avoiding this particular subject. Bring it around it town. Mega fun. Around town. Um... Uh, 
we got uh, one of our favorite actors of all time. Ooh. Yeah, coming in the house for Megafauna. Again, this isn't a top 10. This is just a... Um... No, no, we're not ranking them. We're just trying to give our examples of some of these Megafauna that have existed. Um in our in our lifetime, I mean, they're not that far away from modern humanity. Like you said, uh, they really things are like I mean, the American lion and the giant sloth existed among humans. Humans have seen them. And this one uh, uh, lived amongst humans as well. Um, and they believe that these were, oh, uh, that's not a fact. But, um, but anyways, uh, Ray Romano is the next... Um, uh, <laughs> oh, we're bringing it to the Ice yeah, Age yeah. once again. We're bringing the Ice Age. We're bringing it to Ice Age, and we are bringing it right down, up and around the woolly mammoth. Had to be on the on there uh, on the mention. I almost said on the list, but in in the mention, you can't not go with woolly mammoth. The only reason why I didn't bring it up is because I knew that I was hoping that you would. And uh, now, please tell us about the woolly mammoth, which is one of the uh, the elephant family, similar to the mastodon or the African elephant, but larger and hairier larger and hairier um they were um it honestly the thing is with that ten thousand. be honest number, please this, don't this, lie to us <laughs> this, this is what i'm gonna lie to you about because i want to make sure that i lie about this one. okay um this specifically is it's speculation but they could have even coexisted as little as 4,000 years ago with humans wow. based off of depending on what you want to read, which would mm -hmm. be the craziest thing because that is far past the, again, we're not going to go there yet. Maybe I should, but the 10,000 year mark mm -hmm. of why a lot of these things went extinct. Yes. Um, and, and this is wildly evident based off of frozen, um, you know, cadavers. Wait, do you call a animal a cadaver or just humans? You call it a carcass carcass cadaver is just a human being i think so all right i mean you can be generous and treat them like people and, and call it a cadaver but I, I think it still means the same thing but usually when you talk about an animal you talk about a carcass yeah right so anyways but either way i mean we know that elephants are amongst its the, body uh, yeah the body um ele elephants specifically are amongst the humans the crows and the elephant sorry the elephants elephants fit with humans and crows in the fact that their level of intelligence allows them to play mm. um, some of the smartest creatures on the planet the recognize themselves uh see where they fit into like almost borderline consciousness mm. um, raising their young for many many years which you brought up in the past that is a sign of intelligence the more time you spend uh raising your young doesn't necessarily correlate with making them more intelligent, but it does correlate with the intelligence of the species as a whole. Right, right, exactly. Teaching them as much as you possibly can before you let them out on their own. Mm -hmm. um, but if if this is, um, you know, depending on what you read, uh, 2000 BC, that these were still hanging around, they were with the That pyramids. is crazy. So the, the pyramids stuff. of like, Giza are already built at this point. Yeah, yeah. And there might have been a couple of these hanging around still. I mean, That's it's crazy. absolutely mind blowing. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. They weren't actually the, uh, so other prehistoric animals, like there's a ancient rhino, um, that Holy rhino, uh, pretty much actually. Yeah. It's, it's, it looks like a rhino, but bigger with, with hair. Um, I think it is called the woolly rhino. That might just be the colloquialism for it, but uh, yeah, I think they just, it just, yeah, I thought that was a rhino. joke quite frankly. No, I'm pretty sure that is what it called. Yeah. Okay. So it's not a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Joking with me. No, no, I think it's called the woolly rhino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sure there's more. There's another name for it, like the saber tooth tiger is also called the smilodon. The woolly rhino, I'm sure, has a different name, but it, I think it's called the woolly rhino. Yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. Yep. Which so, is another example of megafauna that um, I mean, we're just going to touch on it now. I'm not going to bring it up as a whole fact, but yeah, another megafauna, the woolly rhino, just massive, bigger than the African uh, black rhino, covered in hair in the ice age. Craziness. That's totally crazy. So um, some crazy William Mammoth facts is that, um, yeah, they lived for about like a million years, essentially. Um, the species. Uh, yeah, the species itself. Um, and they've discovered on every continent of Earth. Um, they wow, are every continent. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the uh, male's shoulder height uh, was between 11 feet. So that's pretty much where their head is. Um, 
when they After their head six, starts though that that the top of their head is yeah huge, so they can move their head going. up and down around that but uh mm-hmm. it's pretty crazy and they were um uh almost seven tons jeez fucking huge a newborn was 200 pounds um <laughs> Uh, baby, besides being pounds. covered in fur with a shorter undercoat, they, you know, had different colors. They, uh, you know, their ears and tail were very short, which is kind of cool. Um, that's an evolution. As opposed back. to the African ra- uh, African mm-hmm. elephant, rather, that has massive ears, which is exactly. a lot of, uh, they think a lot of the use for that is um, heat regulation. Yeah. Because yeah, it's, exactly. it's a, it let the heat out of your body and cool yourself down. Well, a woolly mammoth has exactly the opposite issue. They need to keep as much mm-hmm. heat in as possible, which means tiny ears and a lot of fur. Exactly. And right along the same lines is what you're saying is that they, um, it has to do with heat. So um, I know a person who got frostbite and it was on their ears. So um, one of the, you know, that restricted blood flow, you know, like your ear, for example, doesn't have any arteries in it. Your ear doesn't has very, you know, less capillaries, less, you know, the veins are thinner, that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. The first place for you to get frostbite if you were naked would be your, probably your penis, your toes and your ears, and your nose. Mm-hmm. And fingertips, so, I think probably too. Yeah, yeah fingertips, like, yeah, the that type of stuff. So right, their right. ears were, yeah. were not elephant ears, like you said, with the other, the African ones who mm-hmm. use their gigantic ears to almost act as like a, uh, a heat transfer uh, yeah like solution. a heat sink for their a body solution? oh my god i just called <laughs> yeah the uh, elephant has a heat transfer solution which also known as their ears um but <laughs> basically yeah evolutionary solution evolutionary solution so um yeah they eat grasses and i mean they what's a sedge it says they eat sedges too yeah, it's a type. It's like it's small bushes and things like that. Small yeah. bushes. They had small bushes and grasses, and um, and uh, they they uh, average lifespan was uh, well, not average, but probably max would be fifty or sixty years old. And it's pretty impressive. That's it's similar to the African humans. Animal. It's the craziest thing, and they had their tusks that could be up to uh, sixteen feet long. I mean, this is fucking Jeez, insane. I mean, there's like tusk. so many crazy things. It's such a goddamn fucking bummer Just that an they're. Animal extinct like this would be the coolest thing ever i mean it's so and we do have not only um archaeological proof of uh, about these things like you said we have frozen oh yeah bodies of them yeah. so completely no preserved the fact that we can see the hair on them and not only that we have massive evidence of the hunting and tracking of these yeah. uh these woolly mammoths and mastodons mm-hmm. over eons so we know that not only did they live alongside humans but humans actually hunted them uh, yeah food. exactly and and quite like um for example so there's there's a couple other things i'll i'll save the picture right now that i have on here um there are so it's it's an overwhelming amount of evidence that we coexisted with them yes. one being is that beyond a doubt so this is ivory this is very real ivory i'm not sure where it came from it's from my dad my my grandfather traveled the world in the military so he got all sorts of weird shit probably what this is from um um, there are a lot of examples of sculptures made of woolly mammoth ivory um, <clears throat> that date back a long time ago, um, as well as uh, even older looking huts. So like a frozen mm-hmm. hut that they found um, that has, you know, skins and this and the entrance. It's so cool. The entrance is two woolly mammoth tusks like this. Mm-hmm. So the entrance to this hut is actually tusks from woolly mammoths. Yeah. You know, very cool. That's um, fucking awesome. But what a crazy thing. I mean, gigantic animal. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, I, it's strange enough that like for a lot of parts of the world, uh, especially up north where the woolly mammoths were, you know, prevalent people for generations and generations were well aware of their existence. And even a lot of tribes probably based their existence off of them and tracking them and following their migrations around and hunting them to survive. And then 3000 years later, anyone in Europe had never seen anything that big in their lives. People were bringing elephants from africa to rome and scaring the shit out of people being like check this thing out isn't this crazy meanwhile a couple thousand years before their ancestors were hunting a woolly mammoth for food people completely forgot that they ever existed things like this the african elephant is the new one the woolly mammoth is the old one and people were thinking Mm -hmm. they never even seen an elephant before but meanwhile their ancestors had seen them plenty and survived off of them it's wild to me and he lost the time Absolutely wild. And in and, and closing on the woolly mammoth, one of the craziest facts that I didn't bring up 
is that um, you know they have woolly mammoth blood in vials. I mean, they have preserved woolly mammoth blood because during the perma like permafrost, when just these an invaluable re I mean, just the idea how valuable that is to have a blood of an extinct animal. You'll never find that again because of the permafrost. Like I said because of the ice, we have that. Um, for any other animal on this list, almost all of them, you'll never have that chance again to have the blood. I think that Jurassic Park, they took, they, they said that, oh, the, the mosquito had dinosaur blood. It was preserved in amber. And then mm -hmm. it, it's very, a lot of steps to be able to get that. Yeah. But to have, we actually have the DNA sequence of the woolly mammoth, even though they yeah. do not exist anymore. It's amazing to me. It's just so, so valuable to have. It's just absolutely incredible. And the coolest thing is that when they were able to, um, uh, find these frozen woolly mammoths, there was one thing that wasn't frozen the whole time. Can you guess what that was? It's heart kept yeah. eating. I know. I, I, well, I wish actually. Um, I don't know. No. So you got to fully take a block of ice the size of a woolly mammoth and then stick a needle in it and go right into the center of that woolly mammoth and um, find, a, find a vein or artery, whatever it is, liquid blood, frozen woolly mammoth, liquid blood. Their blood has a chemical in it that acts as an antifreeze. So even when it's in the de dead even of the ice age, it won't freeze. Dead balls at it mostly even if you have frozen. a frozen uh if you had a frozen titanoboa uh, its blood would be frozen solid too no question right. yeah but not the way mammoth wow liquid they didn't blood have to even thaw it out yeah yep Fuck, crazy awesome. craziness liquid blood like they have some sort of adaptation to the elements that they're not seeing in any other animals or maybe i'm wrong but that that allows it to if any very few to not fucking freeze i mean that's so yeah. cool imagine being that cold like it's like oh it's negative 60 and your skin freezes but your heart keeps beating like what a weird thing yeah i mean it would have to be this adaptation you'd have to have to live in one of the eras in the earth where there's an ice age is happening and ice ages have happened multiple times uh throughout earth's history but the most recent one was ruled by the king of the beast at the time, the woolly mammoth. Yep, no doubt. Was. And where did you want to? Is this what you were bringing up earlier? Because that's what my, my guess was that yep. we are trying to clone mm -hmm. the woolly mammoth perfect. currently. Yeah, we are. Um, and it's the perfect segue into two different topics: cloning as well as extinction. Um, I think just because this is right on the fucking topic. Right. But, um, yeah, I talked about the giant sloth, mega contender for me for cloning. Mm -hmm. Um. Woolly Mammoth is in the process of... The easier contender here, the Woolly Mammoth being that we have their cousin alive, the African elephant, and you could probably or their maybe... children are about the same size. Yeah, you those. could impregnate an African elephant with Woolly Mammoth um, mm -hmm. eggs. As a host. And, and, yeah, as a host in order to to actually have them give birth that way, which God, would not be possible for the sloth. This is the one thing. Like, There's two, there's a couple things I'm excited about um, in the future. And one of them is cloning of extinct animals. And two is obviously like space travel, but like, sure. um, this is fucking awesome. I mean, I would love to see, I mean, if we're God ever going to have a chance it. to see a really willing mammoth, we're living in the right time, my friend. Yeah, no, for real. Like we're quite lucky to have this and it's, and it's likely to happen. I mean, like, I think so. You know, and the other thing is like, there's just so many people who have so much money that just throw it into different things. I'd be like, this is, uh, this is just cool. You know, it's like why Elon Musk does what he does. He's like school and somewhat necessary, but this is pretty fucking awesome. You know, Molly mm -hmm. Mammoth's bringing those back. God love damn it, it's awesome. I think that we, uh, within our lifetime, we will see one or at least the yeah. closest approximation of one. Yeah. Do you know any, do you know any more details on like Wooly Mammoth clothing? Uh, clothing. <laughs> that would be, oh, that, that's a new uh, black market, Wooly Mammoth fur coats. That's some valuable shit. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I think it's probably similar to things we, we clone, we can clone animals now uh, with varying degrees of success. But uh, yeah, the, the, the key is to try to get it as close as possible to its host mother would react. So it's things like um, we have hybrids of the, the liger, the lion and tiger, you, you put the uh, fertilized embryo in or if you don't have that, you try to have them mate and do that. So I think the closest we'd have now is we have to gestate it inside an actual uterus of an animal that has similar DNA, which would right. be something like an elephant. We don't have uh, the technology to completely grow a uh, 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 embryo in a lab yet for that. So we, so as of right now, we need to use an elephant to do it. But I, I don't see any reason why in the future we couldn't actually make the whole entire thing synthetic and uh, yeah, no, grow all kinds of things.
Uh, three years ago, Harvard said they were they were two or three years away from being able to successfully do this. So we, we right, hold we, your breath. It could be any day now. Yeah, COVID probably back things up a little bit. Um, but As it uh, did. but uh, you know, I I, I think that the, as long as people keep keep up with us and there's funding, this this should happen. I mean, there's there's no reason why it shouldn't at this point. Absolutely. But I wanted to roll with the, the elephants on the mind into uh, my next megafauna, which has elephant in the name, but is not in fact an elephant. And that's why I like a lot of these uh, the megafauna names, because a lot of them come from the recent past. They're a lot easier to find uh, than some of these dinosaur skeletons, or not skeletons, rather, uh, fossils. Um, but it's the elephant bird. Have you ever heard of this thing? No, I've never heard of it. The can, elephant can you tell bird. Tell me more about this, Joe. I would love to. The elephant bird, so named not because it had any interaction with elephants in particular, or even that it had anything to do with elephants, because it's huge. In fact, it's the largest bird to have ever existed on the planet, and it lived on an island. Granted, one of the largest islands in the world, Madagascar. The oh, elephant where bird. They're all from. The elephant bird lived in Madagascar. Um, which now I associate Madagascar with, you know, lemurs and smaller species because, oh, it's an island. How could something big live there? Well, it was massive island. There used to be tons of these birds around. And again, they lived alongside human beings. This is the largest bird in the world at 10 feet tall, weighing up to 1,600 pounds. Again, it makes an ostrich look like a little tiny sparrow in that case. And I'm sure it could run pretty close to the ostrich's speed but it would have no need to because it lives in uh, an island jungle rather than a savanna. And it's flightless, much like the ostrich as well. Um, but not only did this bird exist alongside humans, it existed so recently that they only went extinct about a thousand years ago. And certainly humans were the cause of that because when humans started to take control of Madagascar in a, in a bigger way than just nomadic life, they started wiping them out. I mean, what an a great source of food to have this big 1600 pound bird flightless if you can corner it and kill it it's chow time and it's only suited to live on an island unfortunately a lot of island creatures they fit their niche so well like the dodo we speak to in the past mm -hmm. um it's great at that but as soon as you introduce other elements it it's you know it's doomsday for them and that is why we have uh, paintings and drawings not just cave paintings actual drawings of the elephant bird that are in existence now a lot of them are based life. on their their um fossils and skeletons and such but i mean the thing was around so recently that there was certainly not only human beings but there was cities that existed as this thing was still around and unfortunately um more than likely humans are the cause of their demise much like many animals like the dodo, as mentioned, the elephant bird, yeah. the biggest bird to ever live. Unfortunately, dead. but that's just, I don't know what to say besides it's just, it's just so crazy that these, like, I really like giant things. Me like, too. And that's why I was so excited to do this podcast with you. <laughs> like giant, you know, pepper mills, giant like, pencils, giant pencils, giant glasses, mm -hmm. giant, giant shoes giant shoes you know all that stuff um but that there's the you know Giants. like i once I, I think i mentioned this before but i got a <clears throat> um, roommate one time named andrew it's really cool different andrew than this one not our um, andrew <laughs> our andrew um, i lived with him for a couple of years and, and i was like told him one time he's watching this crazy thing and that like i was just like wow it'd be really cool if the world was like that you know he's like but it is brother and i was like <laughs> I like that mentality, but it yeah, is. Yeah, I, I said some crazy thing, and he's like, "But it is if you if you actually look." He's like, "It actually is," and this is a good example of. Like, I agree with him on that. Yeah, it actually yeah. is that cool still. Yeah, yeah. You get used is. to it, so you don't think It'll it is, but it really eyes. is. It's pretty goddamn cool. This. I mean, cool if you woke up today for the first time and this was what was going on, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, it really is. It's really, really crazy. Um, and same thing. So, like, elephant bird a thousand years ago. That's nothing. Literally yeah. nothing. Like, I mean, um, this thing is in the time we up on the podcast. We've gotten much farther in the past than that. Even when clowns clowns were around before the elephant bird went extinct. So that's reason. Dude, that's a fucking excellent way to help our listeners um, yeah. identify like when 
the elephant bird was around. Clowns were already here. <laughs> they were, were around here. well before. And this bird and they is huge. Were well it's after. like an emu, but bigger. It's huge. It's only its legs are like thick, like a elephant. Really, I think it's probably got its names because the legs are so elephant. Thick looking. legs, yeah. Thick, fucking thick legs. I mean that that thing's legs are probably more like Godzilla than the uh, Ceratosaurus or the marine iguana, as far as just thick think so. legs. Well, Godzilla takes a couple of notes from a lot of people, and maybe this is on the list of people that it took. Maybe. Notes. So it had me thinking that thing would be a terrifying thing to come across in nature before realizing it's a herbivore, yeah, much like a lot of birds are, uh, eating fruits and nuts and things like that. So you don't really know direct threat to humans. And in fact, it'd probably run away much like a deer would if you found it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> can you imagine riding your bike and you're like like all of a sudden you, like i come across deer a lot and they scare the shit i mean you see that yeah that's what i'm thinking of. yeah they're, they're scared of you you're scared of them. Like, okay all right this is funny an elephant bird running alongside you there scared the shit out of me but but yeah. it was no direct threat to humans and that's i'm sure the reason why they died out because humans would hunt them rather than the other way around but it had me thinking is there a bird that would be a threat to humans if it was around and i came up with the idea i had in my head in the past i go is that a bird real i remember learning about this bird looked it up it is real it's called the furus sorry furus mm-hmm. has- haside is its technical name but it's also Sounds known like as you nailed the pronunciation of that it's also known as the terror bird <laughs> that that is its its colloquial name the terror bird and terror it did reek now this thing lived uh two million years ago so it's well before the time of humans but still in the time of birds in the time where birds were transitioning from more of a dinosaur over oh to God. what we'd see as birds today and this thing was up to four feet tall and it was a meat eater it would hunt Holy meat shit. and it would tear things apart with its massive beak an 18 inch long beak never mind how much it was wide and heavy this thing could run down its prey like a road runner that was four feet tall and tear it to pieces with its massive beak. I mean, that is something to be, to be afraid of almost as big as a human with a beak, the size of your fucking head. And it would tear you to pieces. You're afraid of a, a hawk swooping down and getting you a couple clips. Watch out for the terror bird. You better have a fast bike to get away from that thing. Dude, you just watch, literally, literally just Google ver, uh, uh, Google pictures of either the terror bird or forest uh, has today and see like it's the most aggressive fucking thing <laughs> it makes the shoe bill look like a little I've bitch. ever seen in my life like <laughs> it's so aggressive in just in like in depictions it's like oh my god this thing must be uh, just so annoying i mean and you and you see how how it, birds act now i mean they're just so brutal to each other and i can't imagine the, the just the fury and the reckless abandon for life that this thing would have was tearing mammals apart i think it hunted probably rodents and small mammals for the most part but it was no joke the terror bird it went extinct two million years ugly. ago and i'm glad it did it's for ugly, my own safety misproportioned very t-rex like mm-hmm. um has a big tongue and a fucking beak it's yeah like, like i said annoying. it's, it's in the transition it's like that, from no, dinosaurs no, it reminds to me of that fucking annoying bird in Duncan that shoots the pebbles at you and goes ah and just shoots it's that type of bird but the size of a t- the size of like the the dinosaur in jurassic park in the kitchen scene and that's yes. the bird we're talking about here yeah yeah exactly it's like the height Fuck of it. a velociraptor awful. but it's a bird and it's got yeah. it's, its mouth is probably as big you know it's awful it's fucking terror bird it's, i think aptly named awful bird it, terror bird and terror is a whole nother word besides like uh not well managed bird i mean it's like a whole nother situation of like it inspires it's terror and it's aggressive relentless clearly just i watched i saw one picture aggressive relentless violent mm-hmm. hungry angry and hard to kill i'm getting all that I yeah i mean i happen to agree with it you just that. looks awful yep yeah yeah so there we have it the elephant bird the biggest bird in history and the terror bird maybe the most feared mm-hmm. yeah yeah i'm not loving the terror bird not a big fan of that here we go. What's your next on the list of megafauna, Dylan? What else we got here for the biggest beast to ever live? Thanks for asking, Joe. On my next on my list is something that is uh, abundant in history. Um, you wouldn't believe it because of mm. the size. Um, but uh, we're talking about dun 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 megalodon sharks. Oh my gosh, the megalodon! And the megalodon shark. 
Um, uh, and we're not talking about no great white, right? The great white is uh, the biggest shark we have now, right? It must be a little bit bigger than that. No, or is no, it? The, the, no, no. The great white is the great white is not the biggest shark we have now. The biggest shark we have now is like the. Um, uh it's like the blue shark it's it's got another name it's like oh the whale shark sorry that's not i mean they call it a shark but it's really not a shark though well that's the thing but it well it fits the category of a shark but it's 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 pretty big but it's not it's um, the biggest aggressive. fish we have is the whale shark yeah it's just yeah so the biggest like, shark i would say is a great white shark though yeah what about the basking shark because it's Ooh. quite similar to the whale shark there's they're all kind of the same size very but, but are those both not sharks though do you, uh, I mean, one of them's name is uh, Rincondon Typhus. The there's Satoras Maximus. So, like, I don't see any similarities. And then, yeah, I, I think know. it's like a catfish. It's not the biggest cat that can swim. It, it, it's called a whale shark, but it doesn't have any teeth or anything. It doesn't even hunt. It just it just sifts through the water, sucking up krill and things like that. Yeah, it's more like a whale a really, than it is so, a shark. Yeah, so that's a really, really good. But it's point. not a mammal, though, so they don't call it a whale. Actually, it's the shittiest name ever. It's a whale shark. It's neither a whale nor a shark. It's just a big right. fish. It should be called the swimming net. Yeah, actually, that's a really good way to put it. So, but anyway, so like, so the craziest fucking thing of all time. I was teeing you up for saying that though. Though megalodon is much bigger than the great white shark, which is our scariest jaws, the great white shark. But the megalodon makes jaws look like a little pretty little girl literally a pretty little girl um <laughs> it is wildly mind-blowing that so like all right so how, when you when you all right so if anybody out here wants to google like biggest animal nine times out of ten it comes up in meters and i just didn't go to math school so i don't really you know, I don't, <laughs> it was like three feet in a meter right around there yeah relatively all right, so all right so so the great white shark is 18 feet long and big that is shark. your jet is your jaws shark it's terrifying mm -hmm. it's, it's mouth no yeah, picture jaws picture the scariest shark you can see like the giant yeah the giant teeth the whole thing that's a great yeah. white absolutely no problem swallowing humans easy peasy for them um no kidding and, a shark the size of us would kill you or tear you to shreds even six feet long would tear you to shreds kill the fuck out of you yeah 18 or just, feet long kind of like the godzilla um you know king kong thing is that like even the tiger shark, or the or actually more specifically the bull shark, mm -hmm. which is which is half the size of a great white, if not smaller, um, definitely smaller. Fucking obliterate a car tire. I mean, like, oh, it'll... which is one of the hardest things to destroy of ever. Yeah, um, the bite strength on that thing is just crazy. Well, the bite and the torsion, I guess, would be this motion would be left right, right yeah. like this, right. and their teeth are designed for that, just like shredding, like this this oscillation. Um, so that's a in great white sharks are so big they're so big i mean dude hang a great white shark 18 feet yeah. that's not fucking around at all dude i mean they that's are insane. the apex predator uh of the ocean for as long as far as fish it's are insane. concerned nothing yeah. else stacks up is if you're talking about fish it's insane how big they are mm -hmm. so then we bring it back a while to our megalodon shark the and megalodon um 75 feet long <laughs> 75 feet we're not fucking around at all here i mean completely absurd it did to be that much bigger than the, the biggest you know violent shark we have now 75 feet multiple exponentially larger than it is just exponentially the is the best word it's insane i mean it's the craziest thing ever and like so people that like um alaska is a great place to find megalodon teeth and um really? just the tooth alone it, yeah I, I used to follow these people and they owned like a bunch of property in alaska and they're constantly digging up megalodon teeth so like mm. um they're out there there's still probably millions of them out there the teeth yeah you can find them look hard enough and it looks like it, it looks like a like a i mean you have the root and then you have the tooth structure itself and it's mm -hmm. it's 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 uh easily twice the size of my hand like yeah like, it's like it's like bigger than a dinner plate and it's one tooth and it's you know how many teeth that the great tooth, white yeah. has it's just rows and rows of, i mean i can't imagine this thing it's being real absolutely mind-blowingly insane that this was actually a thing i mean it's it's ridiculous um it's that this, this was real and they were you know as always every continent everywhere on earth um mm -hmm. um 
and it's it's just mind blown. So that's that's you know absolutely no con no question um, that uh, these need to be here. So they were just like most of the other megala uh, megafauna. I was gonna say megalas. <laughs> Megafauna, um, <laughs> megalafauna, um, is that, uh, yeah, same dating period where we stop seeing them or where our evidence comes in is that, uh, you know, 10,000, 11,000 years ago. Is that recently, huh? For the megalafauna? Stop showing up. That. Yeah. 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 Yep. So again, there could have lived among humans to see, uh, mm -hmm. a, a megalodon and you'd see a great white shark and, you know, crap your pants. You see this thing and you it could be, you could eat a great white shark easily. No question. I mean, like four insanely times big. Or more. So, we'll like, a picture just... of its jaws. They have um, its jaw size, and you know, nothing against the Titanoboa as far as putting your head in the middle of that. But to see a human being stand in the middle of the jaws of this thing, it, it, they just stand up comfortably. It, it's very yeah, just wild. Easy. Yeah, it looks like absolutely. a hallway. It's the, the mouth of this thing. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's absolutely incredible, and just like. <sighs> It's cool. It's really cool. I was going to mention some of the scriptures and these big fish. Oh, yeah. So based off of like this, like different types of scripture that you see on ancient court history for people and, you know, the Quran, Bible, that type of stuff. Um, the re Another big factor into why these were here is um, even, bef you know, so let's say, bef you know, pretty much before boats and before industrialization in any way, shape or form and, and, and mass fishing, um, the seas were just floating, like fish were just jumping out of them like crazy, you know? Well, yeah, and, that, that's where life began on the planet as far as we know is that um, yeah, the oceans yeah, like, have always been the, the fullest and have the most diversity because that's where, yeah, that's all existed. It's like talking about a jungle versus a mountain. I mean, some things can live on a mountain, but it's barely anything and the jungle is full of life. The ocean is the original jungle. That's where all the life comes from. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's it's like grass seed to get out water twice a day. It's just Land like is like the mountain to the jungle that is the ocean. Exactly. So, um, you know, you could imagine this thing's diet being that goddamn big has mm -hmm. got to be thousands of tens of thousands of fish a day. If it's, it's guy, they have to just have to eat so eating. much food. Uh, Insane, absolutely incredible. There's, and it and it's and it all the other thing is too is it's got. Um, unlike some of its, uh, you know, brothers and sisters, it's got a massive set of fucking killer teeth. I mean, we're Chompers. talking the M1 Abrams tank of fucking sharks. Um, mm -hmm. It's designed to hunt and kill big ass shit. Like, mm -hmm. it's a waste for it to eat mackerel or With fucking prejudice. salmon. You know, this is a, it's eating tuna. It's eating ancient tuna it's eating yeah other sharks, it has to be whales. eating these fish it's just, just ripping so the shred yeah. big as much chunks of big shit as it possibly can as its goal is just big things i'm gonna eat that yeah i mean thinking great whites now uh one of their biggest prey uh similar to killer whales is eating seals and things like that and seals are very large seals mammals are but shit but not thing. compared to the yeah the the, the yeah. prey that the megalodon like eating can take an olive for the megalodon literally <laughs> <laughs> eating an olive exactly yeah nice Chop olive away. tree crazy town so joe that's the megalodon shark it's fucking gigantic had to uh, come up the meg another and popular culture yeah it's insane so what what do you got what do you got for next up so i had to round out our list here i had to think we talked about the biggest ape the biggest bird now that now the biggest shark and i figured let's look a little smaller here and think about them. what's the biggest insect to ever have existed because we think of now you know insects are these little tiny things are insignificant they're just bugging us hanging around uh the biggest insects we see today are seen things like uh you know amazonian centipedes or millipedes these giant uh, almost the size of a snake bugs that can slink around the amazon floor but the biggest bug to ever have existed as far as we know is the meganeuroposis and actually, it was 17 inches long. So picture a bug about a little bigger than a foot. And its wingspan was over two feet. Because this thing was the ancestor of the modern day dragonfly. So it's a dragonfly with a wingspan the size of a bird. And it acted just like a dragonfly did. 
you know how loud those wings are buzzing by you a little tiny dragonfly imagine this thing you probably hear it from a mile away like a drone just <laughs> flying around uh lucky for us we are well out of the range of this thing existing it existed 300 million years ago so even before the reign of the dinosaur this thing was around back in the time when earth was so oxygen rich that plants and ferns were growing massive and talking about the environment and the climate basing on how big you can get imagine how rich the earth was that a dragonfly could grow to the size of a cat that's how sustainable life was at that particular time for insects i mean I don't know if Bigfoot can still survive in this kind of environment and climate, but at that time, bugs could get to the size of a house cat. It's just insane to me. It did go extinct on, uh, let's say 300 million years ago during the Permian extinction, which was the end of what we consider the Permian explosion, which is a crazy time in biological history. The Permian explosion was the biggest increase in species types in the history of the planet. Uh, nearly grew by 70% when it happened. So within this period, it went from a certain number of species, multiply that from four or five times the amount. And it ended, funny enough, what we call the Permian extinction, which is by far, we touched on it a little bit during the Nostradamus episode, is the most massive extinction event in the history of the planet. It killed out from 90 to 96% of all species on Earth. I'm not talking about just numbers here. I'm talking about percentage-wise. Nearly every species on the planet died during this period, including this particular dragonfly and many others. So in a time on this planet, 300 million years or so ago, life almost was extinguished entirely. And we might see the planet as uh, something like Mars or Neptune or something like that, where it's just barren, no life to be seen. We were just that far away from every single species on the planet being wiped out and, uh, Lucky for us, it, it, the boom and the bust period never ended. I mean, 100 million years after that, we started to see dinosaurs. So anyway, it, it ends up finding out. Life finds a way to, to uh, quote Jurassic Park. But I thought that was that was kind of fascinating to me that it, it existed in a time where dragonflies could get that big, but it didn't make it through an extinction event that killed nearly every single thing on the planet. It made the dinosaur extinction look like a, a bad Sunday. The Permian extinction. Fuck that. So uh, honorable mention I wanted to give to the uh Megalochalus Atlas, which is the largest tortoise to ever exist. It existed in Asia with a length of nine feet. Its shell was only seven feet at the nine feet. Imagine a seven foot shell. It was forty four hundred pounds, meaning that it was the same size as a smart car, but weighed two smart cars and it was a tortoise that walked around in asia well, about that. about uh God, thousands of years back but it also went extinct around ten thousand years ago it just is insane to me the idea that there's a car walking around with a shell and it was just eating vegetation walking i around. really appreciate that because I, I think that i'm i'm as probably most people very pro turtle i think turtles are the coolest turtles are great turtles are so cool and that's so the biggest old. one that we know about wow that's insane that I mean, really, it was a car. Insane. It was just a walking car. And I mean, if it's any indication to what other tortoises live, it probably lived for mm -hmm. maybe 100 years or more. I mean, no, bigger more, animals live maybe. not as long, but maybe 50, 60 years with this beast. Yeah, yeah. Who, yeah, who, who knows with that one? That's crazy. I saw a giant turtle at the Peabody Essex Museum mm -hmm. in December, I believe. Um, and it was about my size. And I was wow. pretty, it was, it was, it was not alive, but it was, um, no, it because died, died, they don't exist died. that are alive that are your size. I know, but it, it died in the 1800s, and they have oh, wow. it in one of their exhibits, and it's it's uh, it's quite absolutely astounding. You're like, wow, this is really cool. You know, turtles yeah. are cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and then again, uh, ten thousand years ago or so, there they go. Sensing a theme here, it's been throughout the entire podcast. 10, there it is. Years. Uh <laughs> wrap the list up with um 
the the two we have left i know we know the last one we're going to talk about here um but i want to talk about the biggest land animal to ever exist because we've been talking about a lot of these sea creatures like the megalodon or, or things like the whale shark which is the biggest fish that is alive today um but i looked it up and it seems to be as far as we know the argentinosaurus <laughs> Finally, cool. funnily enough, it was found in Argentina. You can imagine found that. in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> the United States of America it was found in. Yeah, there's a dinosaur named after an American state too. It's yeah. called like the Colorado or something like yeah. that. Mass- famous Massachusetts uh, skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it, uh, the Argentinosaurus uh, was not only the biggest uh, dinosaur, but the biggest land creature to have ever existed, and it is a. Uh, a long necked dinosaur, which we know are the biggest of the dinosaurs uh, that we know about. This is the Cretaceous period we're talking about here. Um, and yeah, it was up to 130 feet long from the tip of his nose to the back of its tail and weighed around 100 tons stomping around on the earth. Again, if an indication to all the other thousands of species of herbivores with long necks and long tails, mm-hmm. it, uh, it survived similarly. And it went extinct around the time that Uh, We expect dinosaurs to go extinct and the mass extinction event that happened 65 million years ago. Big old meteor hits the earth right outside the Yucatan Peninsula. Kaboom. That's good night nurse for most species on the earth, especially the big ones, because the bigger they are, the harder they fall, whether it's a species or the biggest land animal to ever have existed, the Argentinosaurus. Which brings us to the big one on our list. We had to save it for last. I had to nitpick about it with Dylan to get us for the last pick, but I had to get this on the list. It's the biggest animal to have ever existed on planet Earth. Talk about megafauna. Biggest bird, biggest fish, biggest bug. All well and good. What's the biggest animal that ever exists? We're getting towards Godzilla and Kong here, folks. What is the big one? Gigantor. The biggest animal to ever have existed on the planet, bar none. Dylan, what is that animal? We're going to give you a wild guess if you guys want to take a uh, mental guess. of what Yeah, g- give him a couple seconds to uh, before the commercial break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, before the commercial break. Um, the tongue of this particular mammal is as big as an elephant. The tongue is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's an indicator for you folks. Talking about woolly mammoth tongue over here. Yeah, it weighs. Uh, all right, so I rephrase that. It weighs as much of an elephant. Yes. So yeah, it's not like the same size tongue as an elephant. Its tongue would weigh as much as an elephant. Completely insane. Um, this particular mammal was protected in 1966 from hunting, so people have stopped hunting it. It's still alive, and the population is slowly increasing, and it weighs as much as 150 Honda Civics. Let's take a wild guess here for what we have. Jesus. We're coming in at... The blue whale. The blue whale. The biggest creature to have yeah. ever existed on this earth still oh, exists today. Exists. You can see it if you go hunting for it and go finding it. Hunting without killing it, I have you know. Go looking for it, I yeah, should we'll say. We'll kill you, personally. I'll kill you if you do that. But yeah, it blew my mind to realize <laughs> that the biggest animal to ever existed, not the Tyrannosaurus rex, not the Brachiosaurus, not the Megalodon, not even the giant sloth, it is the blue whale, and it's still is existing on the planet today, which means we have in this era, the biggest animal of all time. It lives among us now. Yeah. Still after all the megafauna we talked about that have gone extinct and how difficult it is to be huge and alive on the planet. We still have the biggest one right now. Still their blood vessels are so wide. You can swim through them. That's fucking crazy. They're big. They're very big. Um, Their mothers who nurture their young, give their calves i think it's like up 600 liters of milk per day in the first year per, per day. day 600 liters um that's let's just say let's let's just say that's 600 gallons right it's not liter. but let's say it is liters how much is a liter in gallons? a two liter bottle is like a soda bottle right okay so half a gallon so we're talking about 300 gallons a day i'm not sure I don't Something know. like it. 300 <laughs> gallons of milk. Let's just say it's. What let's just say. What was it? 6,000 liters? 600 a day. 600. So 300 bottles of Coke full of milk. <laughs> That's a lot of Coke. That's a so, lot of Coke. A lot yeah. of milk, too. Um, 
and uh it's yeah up to 98 feet long and 170 tons so 170 times 2,000 pounds is how big this fucking thing is i mean like you said multiple cars worth i mean it just is a massive creature it could never survive on land the argentinosaurus couldn't even come close to that and it was walking around in the time where there was much more different climate and different oxygen rich environment but this thing is surviving mostly on krill which are nearly microscopic little insects of the ocean and it has to eat that much of little krill so are krill those things so if you go to the um massive so say you go to the atlantic ocean anywhere pick pick a spot Cape cod maine new hampshire virginia whatever um take your hand in the sand do this sometimes you see little like worms doing this in your hand is that krill no you wouldn't be able to see them with with your naked eye no like Uh, like sometimes it's like you can't really see them but they can tell something's moving in there but that's what blue whale eat? No, what, what what they look like to you is a big pink cloud in the water. It would look like a cloud of uh, almost like algae. Oh. But they're actually, if you put them under a microscope, they're actually little tiny shrimp. So they have like legs and eyes and things, but they're so tiny that you'd only be able to see them when they're in um, swarms of hundreds of thousands of them. They look like pink clouds in the water. And blue whales just come through there and they just sift up the whole thing and yeah. slink them all up in their mouth. So, I mean... You don't actually measure how many krill blue whale eat in uh, numbers. You measure them in weight because you're just it's just right, millions right. and millions of yeah. them. Yeah. So something like that. So the biggest animal in the world eats one of the tiniest, you know, creatures we have. It just has to eat so much of them. That's insane. I mean, that's totally craziest thing is that they they're not just like going through schools of fish with their mouth open. They're going through a no. krill, which is the size of uh, uh... It's microscopic. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah, I mean, you, you need to fill an entire bucket full of them even to see them uh, because they're so mm-hmm. tiny. And like I said, only because you, they school at the, at the point where there's millions of them that you can actually discern the pinkish color that they they give out. But um, you wouldn't be able to catch one krill, whether you took 100 years to do it, it wouldn't happen. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's insane to me that that happened. It reminded me of the thing you talked about where um, trees don't just, you know, pop out of thin air. Everything that makes up a tree comes from its environment because you have to grow in a certain way. And to me, that's the blue whale. I mean, how much resources do you have to take in, whether it's breathing, um, whether it's, you know, drinking water, whether it's eating krill in order for it to grow that massive. And let's not forget, a whale is a mammal. It needs to breathe air. It cannot survive in the water. It needs to breathe air. So even though the the blue whale's range is the planet, as far as we know, it doesn't go as far north as the polar ice caps, but we don't know anywhere on the planet that it, it, it cannot go on the ocean because it runs the whole fucking show. Um, but yeah, it has to take in all those nutrients and resources to grow as big as it is, and it does so. And it becomes the most massive creature on the planet ever to have existed. It's amazing. It's the coolest thing. And and just like kind of a lot of these things, um, their lifespan is more than humans. I mean, their average lifespan is 80, 90 years, which ours is like 70. That's something. nuts. Um, and the uh, the oldest blue whale that they've discovered was 110. Wow. Um, uh, <laughs> That's almost Cocky Bennett numbers. Dude, it's within it's within a decade of Cocky Bennett. It's good runs for an animal yeah. that big. Yeah, krill is fucking nuts, man. Yeah, so they so yeah, the they, where, they do sorry, they do eat for uh, up to forty million krill per day. Is the number. Wow, that's um, insane <clears throat> for days. And, and uh, they they cruise at thirty one miles an hour. That's three times faster than a th- more than three times, probably four times faster than the um, the Evergreen or the Ever Given. <clears throat> You know, the dick ship? Oh, the, oh, that, the cargo ship. It's also yeah. as fast as the fastest human being can run on land on record. 31 no. miles an hour? Someone can run that? Uh, I think I think that the fastest person like on record... What? No, no. <laughs> Let's double that, yeah. 31? Well, I mean, I think it's 29 or 30 miles an hour, yeah. A record sprint? Yeah, it's 30 That's miles an insane. hour. That's insane. That's the crazy thing. Like, I, I, in a straight line on my bicycle... The mm-hmm. fastest I can pedal on a flat surface, slightly downhill, is in, is like thirty ish. That's crazy. The fastest That's crazy. bicycle in the world, though, can go well faster. Hundred plus, yeah, yeah, way, way, way fast, yeah. But yeah, but yeah, yeah, no, that, it's crazy. So I mean, you could even you couldn't even outrun a blue whale if you're on land. They're not in the water. Yeah. Also, but you have no need to fear. Blue whales are not uh, preying on anything yeah. bigger than a krill. They don't even eat. Like I said, they don't even eat fish. Really, they, they don't. They don't hunt down yeah. fish. 
So you don't have to worry if you're about finding them. Nemo and Dory and uh, you're, you know, they got sucked in because it's a different story. Right, that was a humpback whale, I think, in that particular tale. Yeah. But very similar uh, feeding style and similar type of animal. I think they're part of the same family. Oh, okay. All right. Well, another crazy thing is that um, it it does produce one of the loudest sounds naturally produced on Earth in the same um, uh, top 10 as uh, volcanic explosions. Damn. Good uh, thing they're the underwater. Can um, can produce a noise that's 140 decibels. Um, and then the call of the blue whale, actually, sorry, the, uh, sorry, my bad. I ris- misread that. A, um, uh, a jet engine, I'm not sure if this is considered uh, talking about um, uh, low bypass jet engines, like a F-16 or a B-1 bomber. Um, a high bypass would be like a 737 or your commercial jet. They mm-hmm. do have different sound profiles. We know this, but I'm not sure what one. F- so a jet engine, it says. It just says jet engine. We don't know if this is a low bypass or a high bypass. It says 140 decibels, mm-hmm. which is quite loud, whether it be a Spirit Airlines or an F-16, very loud. But a blue, the call of a blue whale reaches up to 190 decibels. That's pretty That's cool. crazy. And as we know that, that uh, sound travels farther in water, water than in air so, so it's even I mean, crazier you'll yeah. be able to hear that very far um, away yeah that's crazy so the yeah the blue whale is there you the have biggest it. biggest it's just the craziest thing that the biggest thing that ever ever lived on earth like it's, we're not talking about like remember. prehistoric like hey t-rexes and bronchosaurs sure. and uh, yeah, whether it's fish or reptiles huge. or birds or uh, insects it, the biggest to ever live is a mammal and it lives here today with us. Yeah, Blue and it's whale. still here. It's still here doing its thing. It's fucking incredible. So that's it. That's the biggest one. Um, spiders, a little bit of a letdown. They're not that big. It isn't Lord of the Rings. They're not that big. <laughs> yeah, the biggest spider ever, really. Shelob in the uh, the cave next to Minas Morgul is the biggest spider. But yep, it's not real. One. Yep, exactly. What was, uh <laughs> I had a feeling that I was like, oh, you go anytime, anytime you Google like biggest prehistoric anything like stink bug, fucking spider, capybara, mm. dog, whatever it is, they like sloth, they all show up like, you're like, hey, this is pretty They're crazy. all bigger. Yeah. Spider just didn't have to do it. It never did. It didn't have to go bigger. Not necessary. It had just yeah. a good, had a good enough life where it was at. Yeah. It was I was honorable, honorable mention to the dire wolf, which was not only in Game of Thrones, yeah. it was a real wolf that existed mm-hmm. uh, again around went extinct around uh, 10,000 to 5,000 years ago. And it was almost double the size of a wolf you'd know now. Similarly, just a bigger version of the same it's thing. It's insane. It's totally insane. I mean, the, the bite force on that thing must have rivaled any creature on the whole planet. Imagine the bite force of a wolf, double it. No, thanks. Hey, like you said, we can break concrete with our mouths weren't for our teeth and our nerves. Imagine <laughs> something like that. It's not good. It's not looking Whoa. good for anyone. Snap yeah. that line. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Like we said, all these megafauna, it, it's hard to tell um, why they're all gone. I'm sad they're gone. It'd be, it'd be nice to see Life some of them. And it would be good to, if we could get that, uh, that more of the mammoth blood and things like that. We can maybe recreate them or clone them to see them today. A couple of reasons why people think they might have gone extinct is um, when the Ice Age uh, ended, our most recent Ice Age, it started to get warmer. And a lot of these animals might have been not so well suited. Some of the woolly mammoth. Uh, which are suited to being frozen alive. Apparently their blood still stays uh, liquid. They might not be so suited when the world's uh, global temperature increases. And a lot of these animals were very well suited for the ice age for thousands of years. But when the ice age went away and it started to get warmer, I think a lot of them could have died that way. That was one of the hypotheses people have, or a lot of these animals just couldn't survive the changing in climate because they're so well suited to a world that was very different than the world we are now. There, The ice caps went as far south as north carolina and the united states and um almost in the middle of europe and most parts of russia 
during then. So now picture, just move the entire climate down. So we have like the most northern part of Canada is not an ice cap. It's still tundra and it's colder than fuck. So move the entire ice caps down to North Carolina and put the tundra there. It's a lot less room for things to wiggle around. And most of the fauna we know from the time lived right in the right in the equator. They're right in the belt. All the other ones were suited to living on our equivalent of Pluto, just a frozen wasteland. So when the world gets as warm as it is now, you just can't live like that. I mean, you, your polar bears can't even really live in the United States and they're they're living in today's world. So I can't imagine being one of these ice age beasts, whether it is the Smilodon or the American lion or the mammoth living along now, I can see that there's maybe a point that it got a little too warm for them. That's one idea about it. Uh, what do you think about that? Does that seem reasonable? I, I do think it's quite reasonable. Um, I have different theories. Mm. Another theory is that there might have been another meteor strike with the dinosaurs. There's not a whole lot of evidence to support that, though. Uh, the, 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 the global uh, deficiency in species after that was not that conclusive compared to other dinosaurs. I don't, I don't think yeah, that, that theory no, doesn't seem so. to track for me either. I'm not buying it. Uh, the theory that lands with me the most is what we've been talking about uh, this whole time, which is that it's so recently, 10,000, 20,000, even 1,000 years ago, and there's one common denominator to all of those things, and it's uh, a little something called Homo sapien, which is my uh, idea. Well, I have two things. So, like, before you get a Homo, homo sapien is, I know that the woolly mammoth is, um, at first you think, oh, cold's fine for that thing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that it isn't that simple. So... You go, so back down, go back down to the woolly mammoth we're going 10,000 years ago. There was an ice age. And just because it's an ice creature don't mean that it don't do well with change. You know what I'm saying? I'm so, following you. <laughs> you're following me on this. Is that I'm following you on that. Yeah, that, that's for dang sure. Yeah, uh, you got a woolly mammoth that is used to uh, one million years of It's not good with uh, change. Climate know, you're saying it is good with change. See. And then you have a new ice age coming about, and its food source changes drastically. So, woolly mammoth ain't got as much. Oh, I can tell you're reading because you said drastically. <laughs> drastically. Today's episode is brought to you by Fiora de Vino Chianto Classico Reserva 2017 import from Italy. So, <laughs> what I'm saying is that the woolly mammoths have a consistent lifestyle based off of tens of thousands or millions of years of evolution. Mm -hmm. And if there's an ice age, it does alter their food source, their habitat and their life as they know it. So they go extinct just like all their homos like homos. Right. Uh, but to be clear though, the ice age didn't happen and fuck them up. They survived through the ice age because they were superiorly adapted to the ice they age. Did, but it's they the end of the ice age is the problem. Well, wait, wait, because the, the ice beginning age started, and by homos, I meant like homo erectus, homo sapiens, homo other things. I didn't mean to go that way. <laughs> yeah, I was trying, that's I was trying right. to be funny. It wasn't funny at all. It was nothing funny. Well, I, like, I, no, it was funny. I need to try um, this. The Ice Age didn't kill the mammoths. not saying that. It's saying the end no, of the Ice it Age. It didn't kill them, but it killed their food. I see. A lot of the plant life. Yeah. So they, they've oh, okay. been consistently living the way that they've been living for, let's say, a million years or whatever it is. 100,000, 500,000, whatever. Um I don't know. I don't look that up. Um, but it, it changes anything. Anytime you have a take a bunch of Americans and change a little bit of something away of life, they all, a bunch of people die, right? Sure. This is a fact. Yeah, yeah. It's but a, it's hard. I, a, I can't let you get with the most television. adaptable species on the planet is a bad example for not adapting. Humans no, can I'm live saying, anywhere and do not. A, no, 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 no. We can't because look, we right live. Now, we live more widespread than any species to have ever existed on the planet. I not know, even close. I know, but, close. Why, but you can't compare change, humans to the mammoths in this case. I can't. I can't look any, with it. any change, people die. That's a fact. If the TV, if the if Netflix goes out for uh, twenty eight days, people will mm -hmm. die because of it. Some. Yeah, yeah. Some of them will, but an entire will, species yeah. won't die out. No, 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 exactly. But overall, overall, this is a drastic change. They're going from predictable weather and environments to um, to there is a, a a pretty big fluctuation in the food source, the the climate, 
um, water sources, this type of stuff, um, I can see how this could, could make them go practically extinct, which is why they think that they lived up until 4000 BC, because there probably was a small amount of them that were in the right place at the right time that mm -hmm. did, like, again, more, um, whether it be, you know, again, you can imagine the ones that are further up where it's really, 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 really extra frozen now, um, sure. or ones that are close to the equator that just are a little, it's a little the edges off. Um, but overall, majority of them probably got wiped out that ice age. Then there was a, a bunch of stragglers who, who were able to make it. Yeah. Um, and then humans came around. And so it's, a, again, most things, even the ice, even the 65 million years ago, uh, asteroid meteor impact in the mm -hmm. Yucatan wasn't the only reason the dinosaurs left. Right. Yeah. It's, it it's, wasn't it's a, just it's a catalyst, that, but it's just it's one of many things. Yeah. Perfect way to describe it. It's a catalyst. But it is it is not it's a multiple chain uh, absolutely way of things like an airplane crash. It's not mm -hmm. usually one thing. Mm -hmm. It's pilot error mixed with this, mixed with that, mixed with this. Mm -hmm. It's never just one thing. So, um, so that's what I believe. With pretty much everything that we saw that was ten thousand years ago, catalyst catal cataclysmic event, mm -hmm. um, like which was the ice age, which killed most the, of the yeah. like uh, other. Um, you know, Homo erectus, we have Homo sapiens, we have Homo something else, like all these human being mm -hmm. things that were um, essentially cavemen. Um, yeah, there are hominids that are similar to uh, human beings now. They're right, upright right, exactly. apes. Right, upright apes. Um, um, wiped us out around that time. Right. Um, but it wasn't, but that was definitely a big part of it, like kind of like a plague. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm thinking here is that yeah. that that event around then is when, again, this is also when they believe the Sumerians kind of like kind of kicked off the fuck of the earth. Right. Am I wrong? Mm, you're a little early for that. I think. For that? All right. Yeah. So but but yeah. But the, the, the point but still stands, though. It is. It is a valid rock point. Yeah. 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 I think yeah, that exactly. you're pretty so, much on track with that. Yeah. On track with that. So. So that's why I believe most of these things. Yeah. The there was another ice age that did come into to play to make a big change in the world. Yeah. I think that, yeah, I think like, pretty like much the, yeah, literally sorry, the man. perfect fucking ice creature, the loy mammoth still had a hard time because it wasn't necessarily, it was like, Hey, I'm a tough motherfucker. I can fucking hang, but mm -hmm. everything you eat can't hang. So true. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah I, I think that I'm a little bit, uh, I'm pretty much on the same page as you there. I think that humans have a little bit more to do with it um, than Oh, I didn't mention that. Yeah, they change. definitely do. Humans have a really fucking Yeah, because I don't, I, don't I mean, things that were particularly well adapted for the Ice Age, I think became adapted during the Ice Age. The Ice Age wasn't a five year, it got cold all of a sudden. It was a very long time, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe in thousands of years of the global climate changing. So mm -hmm. animals like the woolly mammoth and like the American lion, they evolved during the Ice Age. They, they weren't all hairy and then all of a sudden, oh, shit, good thing I'm hairy because it's cold outside. No, no, they became adapted that way because of the Ice Age. They wouldn't have existed otherwise. The woolly mammoth wouldn't have became woolly with freaking antifreeze blood if it wasn't living during the Ice Age. It, it didn't have antifreeze blood before the Ice Age. It got it during it. Its species got it during it. So for me, it's the, the, sub, the, the subsiding of that ice and the global climate becoming warmer the species that were particularly well adapted for living during the ice age had a harder time. And unfortunately for them, there's a new species that's not only has existed for a while now, it's spreading among the planet and it knows how to hunt in packs and use tools. And it doesn't hunt like other animals where it hunts when it's hungry. And then, you know, the world balances itself out. It'll hunt you to extinction and it'll fucking do it all day long. And that's homo sapien, which I think the timeline it's almost hard to argue against that humans are a major part of the extinction of almost every single species we've mentioned on the list. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's, it, and it's, it's, it, it uh, unfortunately comes in at number one. I mean, you're a hundred percent correct. Um, humans, as woolly mammoths, we know we hunted them. Mm -hmm. Um, and most of these other creatures and critters, an elephant Humans bird. Have, so, so, and the preachers and critters, just like our birds, top ten birds. Shout Don Moro. Shout to the fucking birds. Shout so, out to the goddamn pigeon for coming ah, in number one. Pigeon. Um, uh, the birds that do the best are able to cohabitate with humans. That's exactly right. It's a sad and fact, but not, it is true. They do have a sad fate. Um, and uh, that's how it goes. So, everybody, if you uh, are in arguments with other people, just remember stubbornness has a price. 
Sure Unfortunately, does. it sure does. does. Yeah, I think most of the megafauna were uh, hunted to the edge of extinction, uh, plus Huge the changing climate bummer. in the world yeah. uh, and add to the mm-hmm. fact that they couldn't exist. I mean, whether it's something like the um, the giant sloth, which went extinct around the same time as humans started to proliferate down into South America, and they started to grow out and hunt these things that probably had no natural predators. If you're a 20 foot tall sloth, what's going to get you? You're huge. Even even large cats couldn't take it down at that point. It's like a, an elephant doesn't have any natural predators either. But the African elephant is endangered. And so is the, the black rhino and the, the white rhino are endangered. The black rhino, one of the last ones alive is, is still around now, but it's going to be extinct within our lifetime. Not because of the fact that it's not a badass and it couldn't survive, it's because humans killed them all. And I think that's the, very much the fact for most of these things. And you can see it the same as the elephant bird that only went extinct a thousand years ago. Uh, people killed them all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and a lot of these like apex predators or um, apex species. Mm, yeah, they have no natural say, predators. That, like, so I don't know the word for this. Um, binary is the opposite of this word. So they're like unilary. <laughs> Like there, a rhino is pretty goddamn good at one thing. If you want to have oh, a, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's specialized. fucking war with a rhino, you're mm-hmm. fucked. Yeah. That's a fact. But anything else, you're not fucked. So like, it's very good at one thing in one place. Yeah. Specialized, um, I think is a good word for it. Yeah. They're specialized. Hyper specialized. That's it. So that's the thing is that we have these badass motherfucking animals um, like the rhino like the woolly mammoth, um, right, yeah. like the saber tiger, like the everything fucking sick is really not the, you know, like they're pretty good at everything, survival, attack. Yeah, they're not as adaptable as they are specialized, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and like in that one thing, there is nothing better. You want to take a human yeah. with a sword versus a fucking um, woolly rhino? Good no fucking chance. luck. Not happening. No chance. You're going to get that up the fucking, through the necking out the head you better hope um, you get it up the neck because then you die faster than when it stomps on you 110 <laughs> times in a row and you slowly <laughs> crush it 10 times in a row or or you get a 16 foot tusk through the fucking sternum and you're like shit this is not good um yeah, not so that's good that's the all. thing just humans just you know we're intelligent we're not just locked into one thing yeah, I mean oh. the the actually going think about the idea of hunting a woolly mammoth is just the most terrifying thing I can think of. And people did it with spears. I mean, the bravest people to have ever existed didn't put a gun to someone's head. Uh, they had to hunt a beast a hundred times their size with them and ten of their friends, probably their brothers and their family. And they had to go out there, and a lot of them get fucking crushed to death. But they figured that if they can take this thing down, I mean. Well, and the thing is, it's easy to shit on humans for, you know, making all these animals extinct, which I will be more than happy to because fucking humanity ruined the whole thing, as we always do. But the first ones to do it, the bravest people to ever exist, I think, to survive, they decided that's the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life. Let's all take this stick and this sharp rock and keep poking it until it stops moving anymore. That's fucking insane. Well, and you can feed a family of like, uh, let's say you're, you know, a family of three to six. Th- uh, so you can feed the whole, the whole village for ages with that thing. Well, I was going to say a deer, one modern day deer can feed a family um, of like three for at least three months. So that's just one deer. That's one deer, you know, of like daily intake. Um, so a rolling mammoth, uh, you're like, hey, this is. Keep it nice and gonna... cold on the ice, right? Keep it fresh. Oh, yeah. E- easy to, yeah, especially because you're up there, you're already storing it, no problem. Storage is not an issue. Yeah. Um, and you can just have so much, you know, within the fur, the tusk, the meat, the whatever it is like you guys got a lot and they, they snout to know, snout to tail back then. So, of course, um, hey, all the whole entire hide can make coats for your entire, uh, mm-hmm. you know, nomadic village for, you know, that whole year. Everyone got a coat now. Yeah, it sucks. And uh, you big, know, we, we, big we reward be here big without big. that type of stuff. I wish we could do something about it, but yeah. Um, is what it is me and Joe of the Dylan Joe Basin podcast are uh, mostly Northern Europeans. So, yeah, our, our ancestors, ancestors are no doubt a product had to hunt of these this type of down. shit. So, exactly right. That's what it is. Yeah. So that's megafauna, folks. I mean, that's basically the idea. I mean, we have Godzilla and King Kong, the inspiration, stomping through the cities. But, I mean, that's an amazing idea. These giant kaiju rampaging through, fighting each other. 
But the craziest thing is that not only did beasts like this exist on the planet, the biggest one ever exists is still here today. Like you said earlier, wouldn't it be crazy if the world was like that? And then your friend said, hey, man, if you look. Buddy, it is. Exactly right. Sure is. It's pretty cool. So we say, folks, that's the Dylan and Joe Basement Podcast brought to you by your host today, Dylan. And Joezilla. And Joezilla. Stay posted. Uh, get excited for next week. We have a new exclusive proprietary special guest. We got a new guest. A topic for you guys. Keep it real. Product so, of nuclear peripheral proliferation. For, 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 Sorry, that's hard to say. In fact, it would probably run away much like a deer would. You found it. <laughs> uh, Can you imagine riding your bike and you're like, like, also, you, like I come across deer a lot and they scare the shit of me. You see yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Of. Yeah, they're, they're scared of you. You're scared of like, oh, okay. Right. Elephant bird running alongside you there. Scared the shit out of me. Very, very. I mean, you're not about to give us the biggest animal of all time right now before the list is over, are you? Is that what you're going to do? You wouldn't do that in the middle of the list. Give the biggest one of all time right now. Oh, how dare you say it. Stay here for the end. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm being a dick. I, I have it at my I end, know. and I was like, there's no way he'll do it midway. It's the biggest one. I know. I know. But I know that. You got to stay for the end. One, for sure. It got to be. My other one. What here. are we going to do after this? The, the other one that's kind of big, but it's really tiny. All right. Then, then, then we're going we're gonna to have to do it, then. We're going to have to do it. This is our scariest Jaws, the Great White Shark. A megalodon makes Jaws look like a little, pretty little gay. Literally a pretty little gay. Um, <laughs> it is, no, so this leaves you to talk about the other fish. That is. Oh, God, you're going to blow it and you're going to call it a fish? I'm not blowing it. I, I, it's, it's, a it's not a fish. It's not a fish. <laughs> Yeah, I fucking suck. It's not a oh, wait, how many hours did you say you had on the 60 hours? <laughs> 60 hours of suck. I know how to do a show. Here's the finale. Next up, we have our least favorite song after this. <laughs> Brought to you. I think I'm also, I'm also a little salty because I'm, I'm about to give the biggest bug, and I can't have that after the biggest animal to ever exist. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So you got the biggest bug? Yeah. 